Good afternoon, everybody, from Yankee Stadium. This is Frank Messer along with Bill White and Phil Rizzuto at a twilight doubleheader between the New York Yankees and the Texas Rangers. The Yankees idled yesterday to uh, rest up from Sunday's marathon twin bill out here at the stadium. And in taking a day off, the Yankees gained a half a game on the Boston Red Sox and moved into third place all by themselves as Boston dropped a 6-4 to four decision to the Chicago White Sox last night. The Yankees trailed the division-leading Detroit Tigers by three and a half games, three games in the loss column, which isn't as important this year as it has in past because of the unbalanced schedule. The Baltimore Orioles are in second place, one game behind Detroit, and two and a half games in front of New York. In an effort to keep it going tonight, the Yankees will pitch right-hander Steve Klein in the first ball game. Klein is leading the major leagues in earned run average with a mark of 1.61. And left-hander Mike Kekich will go in the nightcap. The Rangers reverse the procedure with Mike Paul pitching in the opening ball game. Paul has a record of six wins and five losses. And in the nightcap, it'll be a right-hander, Dick Bosman, who has won six and lost eight. Well, the umpires are out, along with Ralph Houck and Ted Williams. And uh, Ted's uh, lineup looks like this. Elliot Maddox will lead off and play center field. Jim Mace will be shortstop. He'll bat second. Larry Bittner will bat third and play left. Catching and batting fourth, Dick Billings. Batting fifth and playing third base, Dalton Jones. The sixth place hitter will be Frank Howard. He'll play first. Ted Ford will be in right field. He'll bat seventh. He'll be followed by the switch hitting little second baseman, Vic Harris. And then a left-hander, Mike Paul, will do the pitching. For the Yankees, Horace Clark will lead off and play second. He'll be followed by Thurman Munson, who will catch. Batting third and playing center field, Bobby Mercer. Batting in the cleanup spot and playing left field, switch hitter Roy White. Felipe Lou will play first base, and he'll bat fifth. He'll be followed in the lineup by the third baseman, Celerino Sanchez. Rocky Ron Swoboda will play right field. Rocky will bat seventh. Then Gene Michael, the shortstop, will bat eighth. And Steve Klein will do the pitching and the bat ninth. Stepping in behind the mic on the other side, here's Frank Messer. Thank you very much, Bill. And Elliot Maddox batting 251 as he comes into this ball game. He has 72 base hits, seven doubles, two triples, no home runs, ten runs batted in. Right hand hitter. Takes care to erase the rear restraining line on the right hand batter's box. And now he'll step in. Plants that right foot right on the rear line. The wind-up by Klein. The first pitch of this game is poured through for a strike, and we're underway in the opener of this doubleheader. Steve Klein, with an earned run average of 1.61, the best of any starting pitcher in the major leagues, has three wins over the Rangers. This pitch is cut on, bops to third base. Sanchez one-hands it, flips over to first, he's out. Maddox down, one away. Here's the shortstop, Jim Mason, batting 217. Just underway here at Yankee Stadium, the wind-up by the right-hander Klein, the pitch to Mason, strike call over the plate, just about knee-high. Mason, a left-hand batter. Klein looks into Munson, ready to work again. The 0-1 pitch. This pitch is lined, base hit over Klein into center field. So Jim Mason comes through with the game's first base hit, a solid line drive over Klein's head, back on past second base. And here is Larry Bittner, the left fielder. Bittner is hitting 287. Top hitter on this club. He's the left-hand batter. Two home runs, 21 runs batted in. Total of 76 base hits, 18 doubles, no triples. Line will work off the stretch and set position as Alou holds the runner Mason on at first. The, uh, the pitch is taken for a strike, a breaking ball, 0-1. Bobby Mercer in center shades Bittner around toward right field. Ron Swoboda in right is extremely deep. Roy White shortens up in left field and plays straight away. On the infield. The 0-1 pitch to Bittner. Hit on the ground right side. They won't get two. They fired a second out there. No play back to first. Alou to Michael forces the lead runner Jim Mason. Bittner reaches on the force. A slow bouncing ball not made for a double play at all. There are two down, and the batter will be Rich Billings, the catcher. A 276 hitter has 54 runs batted in, 105 base hits, 14 doubles, one triple, five home runs. Rangers trying to break a four-game losing streak. And the pitch here to the right-hand hitter. Strike one on a breaking ball. Billings is the only Ranger in triple figures in base hits with 105. 
The pitch to him. Swung on and missed. 0-2. Ted Ford leads the team in home runs. He's batting in the number seven spot on the lineup. He has 10. And Billings, the RBI leader, with 54. The set by Klein. Here's his pitch. Taken for strike three. Called and started to retire. No runs, a base hit. There were no errors and one man left on. In the middle of the first inning, the score, Texas nothing and the Yankees coming to bat. Schaefer invites you to the exciting Eastern States Exposition. Ten big days starting September 15th in West Springfield, Massachusetts. There will be exciting entertainment, exhibits, and games, and rides for the whole family. Come and see the Big E. And while you're there, visit the Schaefer tent for some frosty cold Schaefer beer. Attending uh, Thursday afternoon's ball game between the Yankees and the Rangers will be the Taiwan Little League champions, the world champions of all Little League baseball. And uh, Frank, uh, I think we saw these kids last year when they won. And they were uh, they were not small kids for Chinese. They were pretty good sized fellas. Yes, they were. And uh, look forward to seeing them out here. Always a pleasure to have the youngsters here at the ballpark. You know, they play uh, a surprisingly good brand of baseball. I'm sure I didn't know they were that interested in baseball to start with, but well, now I didn't know they were that big. They had kids but, out here, yes. six, six one, six two. That uh, one kid, that pitcher, tall, slender kid. Well, they say that uh, the northern part of Taiwan, evidently, uh, they have some tall Chinese. All right, here's Horace Clark to lead off. They'll be out here Thursday afternoon as guests of the Yankees. Clark batting 244. He's got 101 base hits, 14 doubles, one triple, one homer. And he takes a pitch low and outside from the left-hander, Mike Paul. Ball into the wind again and delivers. Clark bounces this one to third. Glove there on one hop by Dalton Jones. His long throw, Clark is out, one away. And now Thurman Munson, the Yankee catcher, batting 285. Thurman right hand batter. Here are the Yankee hitting leaders. Bloomberg and Ellis both hitting 284. Neither of them in this ball game. Munson 285. Mercer 287. Roy White at 277. They're battling it out for the club championship in hitting. There's a breaking pitch that misses. Ball one from the left hander Mike Ball. Ball has relieved once against the Yankees and started once against them. Pitched a total of uh, one and a third innings. Two runs, five hits. Didn't figure in either decision, however. Yankees won both ball games in which he pitched. 1-0 deal. And Munson, it's a high fly ball out into left field. Larry Bittner settles under it. Glove up now, makes the catch, and that's all for Munson. That ball was sky high. Not real deep in left. Two down, and here's Mercer. Bobby Mercer leading the Yankees in hitting at 287. In runs with 78, at bats 450, base hits 129, doubles 26, triples 6, home runs 22, runs batted in 73. And Bobby Mercer had the honor before the game of modeling the Yankees' new double-knit uniforms that they will not be going to this year, but probably in the future. He takes up high, ball one. Look exactly like the uh, current uh, pinstripes. Same design and everything, but uh, made of the double knit material so popular with most of the ball players. 1 0 delivery. Foul back, just off the upper deck, bounces back onto the playing field. 1 and 1. Are they buttoned up or are they slip over? How about the, uh, the belt buckle or the, uh, the drawstring? Bill, you just asked me four questions. I can't answer any of them. <laughs> they are buttoned, aren't they? Uh, they do have buttons. I don't know about the uh, pants. Bobby had the shirt down, and I was just ducked in the clubhouse for a minute. He had the shirt on, and uh, uh, it was down over the trousers, just with shirt tail hanging out, in other words. Ball and two strikes. But they do keep uh, retain the Yankee pin strike. Yes. Mm-hmm. Next pitch coming. Swing and a miss. Struck him out, and the side is retired. Mike Paul fans Bobby Mercer, and the Yankees are out one, two, three. Nothing across at the end of one inning. The score, Yankees nothing, and the Rangers nothing. Where you At Adco Financial Services, we think a consolidation loan should be the end of your debt worry, not the beginning. So we not only help you get out of debt, we help you stay out of debt. When you come into Adco, you come into money. 
Because if you deserve the credit at AVCO, you get it. Call us. We're in the phone book. AVCO Financial Services. When you believe in people, get the wrong. Dalton Jones is waiting to lead off the top half of the second inning, Bill, and he'll be hi- uh, followed by Frank Howard and Ted Ford. Dalton Jones, a left-hand batter, and the first pitch to him is taken for a strike. Jones homered off uh, Steve Klein the last time he saw him. Jones is hitting 171. Four home runs, 17 runs batted in for the Rangers. Next pitch. Swung on, bounced to the right side. Felipe Alou has it. Underhand flip to Klein, covering. He's out. Score the play 3-1, to one, and there's one down here in the top of the second. And now Frank Howard. Big hondo. Batting 244. He has only 67 base hits for the year, eight doubles, nine home runs, and 31 runs butted in. I think Frank was hurt uh, pretty much as Vita Blue was hurt, Frank Messer, by his long holdout. Big call like this has to get down and get in shape. Takes him a little more time than the average size man. He bounces this one off the plate. Klein waiting for it to come down near the mound. He's got it. Throws to first. Howard is out. And there are two down. He bounced that one straight down off the dish. Steve Klein fielded it just off to the third base side of the mound. Play goes one to three, and here's Ted Ford, the right fielder. Ford leads this team in home runs with ten. It seems to me like Ford's had ten home runs for a couple of months. Last time, <laughs> the time before last, we were in uh, Arlington, he had ten. Still had ten, went back down there before, last time, and he still has ten. His right-hand batter takes a strike. Ford is hitting 231. That's why he still has 10 home runs. He was batting over 300 uh, early in the season. He swings on this one. Ground ball just past Gene Michael. Base hit. Ball goes past Michael to his left and on through into center field. So Ford is on with a second hit for the Texas Rangers. Two outs, a man on, and uh, here comes Vic Harris, the second baseman. Bill White mentioned in his opening remarks, Harris, a switch hitter, he'll be up there batting left. This young man is just 22 years old from Los Angeles, California. 5'11", 165 pounds. He was hitting 293 at Des Moines when he was called up. Fouls the first one off, strike one. Harris is batting but 110. 10 hits in 91 at-bats. One double, five runs batted in. Next pitch here. Curveball is bounced off the plate again. It is fielded by Klein. Throw the first. He's out. An excellent play by Felipe Alou. Alou had to actually reach around the base runner Harris coming at him to take Klein's throw and then stab the bag and get back out of the way to keep from getting an arm injury if that runner banged into him like that. A good play by Alou. And the side is retired. No runs, a base hit, the man left in the middle of the second to score. Texas nothing, the Yankees nothing. Next time you're heading home all hot and thirsty, step off that noisy summer street into the cool quiet of a friendly tavern. Now we've got you right where we want you, in the perfect place and with the perfect thirst for trying Frosty Cold Schaefer beer. Schaefer, please. Come on up. Your first one tastes great, smooth and bright. But today, one cold beer just isn't enough. So today, you'll really appreciate the quality that makes Schaefer unique. The way Schaefer actually gives you first beer pleasure, first frosty glass to last. You see, we started practicing on more than one beer thirsts before most brewers even started brewing. And practice makes perfect. Schaefer is the one beer to have when you're having more than one. It's Roy White. He'll be up there right-handed against Mike Paul. And the first pitch to Roy. Taken down low. Ball one. Had the play, but down low. White is hitting 277. 119 base hits. 20 doubles, 7 homers, 43 runs butted in. He leads the club in stolen bases with 21. Swings to this one. High boxer down the third baseline. Could be trouble. And White running hard. Beats it out. 
Dalvin Jones played the ball on two hops. Down the high one and one short one. And Roy White with good speed beats it out for an infield single. I think Jones' best shot there was let that ball hit bounce and hope it would have gone foul. That is the Yankees' first base hit. And Felipe Alou steps in. Felipe batting 279 in the race for individual honors on this Yankee ball club. 69 hits, 12 doubles, 1 triple, 4 homers, 27 runs batted in. Right-hand batter takes outside, ball one. See where uh, Felipe's uh, brother Matty is now in the American League, Bill White. The Oakland A's. In fact, he got him started on a winning, uh, winning inning the other day. 1-0 pitch to Felipe. Fastball for a strike, 1-1. One one. He got a career average somewhere around 310, I believe, in the major leagues. He was hitting 314 when the uh, Cardinals let him go to Oakland. Of course, uh, Matty's making over $100,000. That might have been part of the reason. Hard holding White on at first. 1-1 one, one pitch from Mike Paul to Felipe Alou inside. He started to go check the swing, 2-1. A lot of clubs... Uh, Make moves this time of year. Two ball, one strike pitch to Felipe Alou. Throw to first, they got him picked off. Howard's got the ball, throws to second. He is out at second base. Play goes one, three, four. Pitcher to first baseman to second baseman. Or Paul to Howard to Harris, who tagged him out. That is counted as a caught stealing. So Roy White uh, picked off and thrown out. That is only the uh, fifth time he has been caught stealing this year. He's stolen 21 now out of 26 attempts. 2-1 pitch to Felipe Alou. Foul ball. This is the New York Yankee Baseball Network. We pause for station identification. WGY Schenectady serving Schenectady, Troy, and Albany, New York, and all of the Northeast on a sunny 79-degree day. The windup and the next pitch coming. Get on the ground, a shortstop. Fielded there by Jim Mason. Long throw. He's out. Alou digging hard. Made it a close play. Two down. Batter will be Salarino Sanchez. Yankee pitching staff pretty well represented on the sale yesterday. Chris Peterson, Mike Kekich, Fred Bean, Wade Blousing game, and their wives. Sanchez, right-hand hitter, batting 246. Ball winds and delivers. High with an off-speed pitch. Ball one. Yankees three and a half games behind the Detroit Tigers. Later on, we'll watch that Detroit-California game. There's a pitch that is taken for a strike, one and one. Well, maybe not. This goes as long as the doubleheader Sunday, we will. One-one delivery. Swing and a miss, strike two. They start at 11 o'clock in California. Cleveland playing at Oakland. That'll be an 11 o'clock start. Baltimore and Minnesota, we'll have reports on that. Sanchez strikes out on a fastball. And it's the second strikeout for Mike Ball. For the Yankees, no runs, one hit, nobody left. At the end of two innings, the score. Yankees nothing and the Rangers nothing. At the Getty Oil Company, we sell premium gasoline for a few cents less per gallon than most other major premiums. So you get extra gas for your money. In fact, if you drive around 12,000 miles a year and you use Getty Premium, you'll get enough extra gas to get you from New York across Delaware. What's that thing with the spot, Dad? That's a cow, son. Down through Charleston, South Carolina. Look at all the spots on that cow, Dad. That's a horse, son. And into the Sunshine State, Florida. A total of about 1,000 extra miles. Come on, Dad. Last one the pig's uncle. That's a monkey, son. Getty. The company that gives you more gas for your money, so you get more miles for your money. Mike Paul will lead off the third inning. Left-hand batter as well as left-hand pitcher. Takes ball one. Ball is hitting 156, based on five for 32. 
two of his five hits have been doubles, however. Next offering, swung on and sliced foul down the left field line, back into the seats. One ball, one strike. No score in this ball game. Yankees have one hit, the Rangers have two. Now the wind up in the pitch. Line drive over Clark, base hit into right field. So Mike Ball, the pitcher, leads off with a single, and that is the third hit in the ball game for the Texas Rangers. They take the jacket down to Coach Nelly Fox at first base. We'll help Ball on with it. And let's see how they play it right now with Elliot Maddox stepping in. He grounded out to Sanchez at third, his first time up. Now batting 249, 215. Wayne Terwilliger flashes the signs from third base. Line digs away at the pitching rubber with the right foot. Now looks down for the sign. Gloved hand on the left knee. The ball behind the right hip. He brings the hands together, kicks and delivers. Breaking pitch, bunted back toward the mound. They could get the man at second. He's out. Throw back to first. No double play. Goes gets gets by Clark. Munson backs it up. Runner going for second base, and he'll be in there. Maddox races on to second as they force Paul. 1-6. Gene Michaels throw back to first base, got by Felipe Alou. Error will be charged to Gene Michael on the errant throw, allowing Paul to move from first to second, or rather Maddox to move from first to second, as Paul is out on the 1 6 play. Maddox at second base, one down. The batter will be Jim Mason. Mason single to center field his first time up, a left hand batter. Now hitting 220. Klein shakes a Munson sign off, gets something else. Now starts his move. Looks back at second base, holds the set and fires. Fast ball line to center field, in for the base hit. Here comes Mercer's throw, it'll be into second base. Maddox scores, and the Texas Rangers go out in front one to nothing. Line single to center by Jim Mason to drive in the game's first run. His third run batted in of the year. He not been used that much. So the air has hurt the Yankees. Right now, it's an unearned run. That could change depending on what the subsequent batters do. Right now, Larry Bittner steps in. He grounded to uh, Felipe Alou, turned it into a force in the first inning. He's a left-hand batter. Alou holding on Jim Mason at first base. And the pitch. Load outside, ball one. Sanchez plays him very wide at third base. Michael shades over toward the bag. Clark in the hole. Alou holding the runner on. The outfield is shallow and left. To the right side and center and deep and right. 1-0 pitch. Swung on. Bounce back to Klein. He spins. Throws to Michael. Out at second. Back to first. Double play. And the side is out. The run will go down. I'm sure is unearned. As the Yankees come up with a double play. 1-6-3. So it's one run on two hits. A Yankee error. Nobody left. In the middle of the third inning, the score, the Rangers won, the Yankees nothing. Well, it seems like over the last couple of weeks, Frank Messer, the Yankees have always found themselves having to fight back. And, of course, uh, they have done it well over the last couple of weeks, except for the bad road trip they had at Kansas City. On down to uh, Arlington, Texas, and up in Chicago. But uh, I think uh, one of the trademarks of this year's Yankee Ball Club is that they haven't given up, that they have continued to... uh, fight back not only in each individual ball game but uh, there have been times during the season when they could have hung their hats up and said hey fellas uh, let's wait until next year but they haven't and uh, they're still within reach of the Detroit Tigers only three and a half games behind the Bengals that's what's known as a club believing in itself Ron Swoboda here Bill batting 238 to lead off the third inning takes a low fastball ball one Mike Paul will pitch to Swoboda Gene Michael and then Steve Klein. He kicks and deals again. Swoboda bounces it foul off the left side. No balls and two strikes. Paul winds and delivers. And he's low this time. One and two. First pitch evidently wasn't too low. It's been just about knee high. One, two delivery. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Third strikeout for Mike Paul. 
And Gene Michael, the batter. Michael, the Yankee shortstop, hitting 225. 64 hits, six doubles, three triples, one home run, 29 runs, but it is. Frank, that bully's not for Michael or for Boda. One of the guards happened to take a ball from a kid who had gone out on the field for it, and the fans uh, expressing their displeasure at that act. Okay, Bill, 0-1 uh, is the count as Michael takes the first pitch. Next one to him, swung on line into right field, base hit. Ball corralled out there by Ted Ford, and Gene Michael has a one-out single, the Yankees' second base hit in the ball game. And now Steve Klein, the pitcher. See if the Yankees go to a butting game right here. Klein has six sacrifice hits. He is batting 079. And they do want him to butt. He drops one down off the first base side of the mound. Paul juggles it for a moment. Now picks it up and throws him out. Harris covering at first uh, first base. It'll be a 1-4 sacrifice. Michael at second. Two outs. And the batter, Hoss Clark. He grounded out to third base his first time up. Rangers leading in the ball game, one to nothing. Like a switch hitter will be batting right. Right added, Clark is hitting 222 and left added 257. First pitch. Hit in the air to center field. Waiting for it to come down. Elliot Maddox. The ball comes down in his glove. The side is out. No runs. A base hit. No errors. No man left. And now at the end of three innings of play, the score here at Yankee Stadium in New York is the Texas Rangers won. The New York Yankees nothing. No other scores to report. As soon as we... Uh, Gentlemen, as soon as we can pick up that uh, Dodger-Cubs uh, final score, we'll pass it along also. And as the night games get underway, we'll report on them. Right now, our ball game, one to nothing, Texas. One run, four hits. The Yankees, no runs, two hits. And as we go to the fourth inning, ready to describe all the play-by-play -play action for you, ladies and gentlemen, here is Bill White. All right, Frank Messer. It'll be Dick Billings, Dalton Jones, and Frank Howard in that order for the Rangers. Rangers ahead, one nothing. Fines have been tagged for the one run on four hits. Steve over the head and the pitch to the right-hand hitter. Bounced over the mound. Michael charging. Gets a big up. Fires off balance to a loo, and Billings is out. So Dick Billings, first ball hitting, pounds a sinker into the ground. Michael rifled him up. That'll bring in Dalton Jones, a third baseman. Jones, a left-handed batter, bounced to a loo his first time up. A loo tossed to Klein, covering for the put out. We're the top of the fourth, one out and nobody on. Rangers ahead, one nothing. Klein's ready, and he deals. That ball is down low. Yankees play Jones to pull. And the 1-0 pitch. Swung on, hit in the air to left field. White's out there with the range now. He's under it, and has it for out number two. Jones going the other way, but White was waiting on him. Here's Frank Howard, the first baseman. Big Hondo, 6'7", 285. Way off at home runs this year. He only has nine. He's only driven in 31 runs. Howard batting a 244. Fine over the head, and he deals the first pitch. Lined up the middle, base hit. As Marty Springstead, umpiring at second base, had to get out of the way of that ball. Mercer picks it up, gets back into Michael. And that'll bring in Vic Harris, the second baseman. And Harris is in. Harris bounced back to Klein his first time up. Harris batting at 110. No home runs, five runs batted in. He has had trouble getting the bat on the ball. He's a switch hitter. Young kid, only 22 years old. And Nellie Fox, who coaches first base for the Rangers, expects a lot from this kid. Says he's going to be a whale of a ball player. Stretch by Klein. And the pitch. Swung on, driven deep to right field. Back there, Swoboda. That ball is curving foul and out of play. Look at a 
about Harris being a little fella. He drove that down on the right field line. And it just hooked at the last moment in foul territory. So Boda couldn't get to it. The Yankees flame straight away. White uh, not too deep in left field. Mercer in close in center. Pavota now uh, shows a little more respect in right. Stretch by Klein. Pitch to Harris. Fastball hit on the ground and short. Michael Gloves goes to Clark at second. They get the fourth. Oh, they get out of the inning. In the middle of the fourth. The Texas Rangers won. The Yankees, nothing. Roll a few hot lines in a bowling alley, and you'll strike up a sizzling thirst. A more than one beer thirst. When that last frame is over, you'll be ready to score a couple of frosty cold beers. That's why you'll be more than ready for Schaefer. Finishes warm up tosses the Billings and we're ready to go into the last of the fourth. The Yankees have a one run deficit to make up. Rangers ahead 1 0. It'll be Munson, Mercer, and White in that order. Munson, a right handed batter, is batting 285. He has six home runs and 39 runs batted in. Fly to left field his first time up. Rangers flame straight away. Howard at first, Harris at second baseman, Mason the shortstop, and Jones in close at third. Bittner the left fielder, Maddox in close in center, and the right fielder, Ted Ford. Munson taking a lot of time getting ready. Wipes out the back line of the batter's box. He wants to get as far away from that pitcher as possible. Now Paul's ready. So is Munson. The left-hander over the head, and the pitch to Thurman. Breaking ball, bounce. Oh, nice grab by the third baseman Jones. Throw the first. They've got him. That ball was hit to the left of Dalton Jones. He lunged for it. Goldport came up with it. Got up and threw Munson out. One away. Jones robbing Munson of a sure base hit. You know, Bill, if Abner Doubleday had made those bases one foot shorter, I think Munson would lead the league in hitting. I don't care how he hits the ball, he's thrown out by one step every time. Hey, Jones made a great play on him. He did. Here's Mercer. Bobby struck out against Paul his first time up. Now Bobby backs off. Outfield swings around toward right field. They play Mercer to pull. Howard back on the grass and playing Mercer near the line at first base. Breaking ball gets a plate. No balls in a strike. Harris, the second baseman, back on the grass. He's also playing Mercer to pull. Mason, the shortstop, a couple of yards just to the left for the shortstop side of second. The line by Paul, the old one pitch to Mercer. Fast ball is too low. It's one and one. Oh, Scooter. Yeah. I've got to give you the award for something. What's that? Uh, ten innings you did uh, what? the other I... night. That, that was great. <laughs> 1-1 one, one pitch to Mercer. Whoa! Deep to right center field. Way back, way back. It's going. It's up against the wall. Bounces back in. First to around second. The ball bounces in. He might be inside the park. Home run. They're going to hold him at third. They're going to hold Mercer at third. And he stops there with a triple. that ball all the way to the scoreboard. It looked like a home run. Maddox, the center fielder, was over there along with Ted Ford. The ball hit the top of the scoreboard and bounced all the way back to Ted center field. So Maddox and the Ford had to retreat and start back the other way. And by the time they caught up with the ball, Mercer really hustling around second. 
going into third at full steam was held there, and he's held at a triple. We almost had an inside the park home run. Mercer now down at third. I think that was a smart play by Dick Hauser. Mercer was running out of gas. He had an outside shot, a perfect relay would have gotten him. Only one out and Roy White right up there. And right, they bring the infield in. First run at third with only one out. White got an infield in his first time up against Paul. Roy with seven home runs and 43 runs batted in. Stretch and the pitch. Breaking ball fouled off on the right side. That'll make the upper deck. Yankees trying to tie the ball game up. Rangers lead 1-0. One out, Mercer down at third. We're in the last half of the fourth inning. Powers in close at first. So is the second baseman Harrison, shortstop Mason, and the third baseman Jones. Paul stretches. The 0-1 pitch to White. Swung on it up the middle, and it's going to be a base hit. Just got a lead to Mike Paul and the shortstop Jim Mason. Scores tied as Bobby Mercer scores. White holds it first. Before we get to a new, this is the New York Yankee Baseball Network. Let's pause for station identification. This is WGY Schenectady, serving Schenectady, Troy, and Albany, New York, on a sunny 79 degree day. White's two for two now with an RBI. Scores all tied up 1-1. Alou bounced the short his first time up. White with a short lead. A pitch, a breaking ball, dips in over the plate. It's a called strike. Last time White was on at first base, Paul picked him off. Roy stolen 21 bases. Ball comes set. Pitch to Alou, hit in the air to right field. After it, set forward with a long run near the line. Still on the run. He's under it now and makes the grab near the line in right field for the second out. White hustles back to first base. That'll bring in Celerino Sanchez, the third baseman. Listen, let's talk some more about that second game Sunday, but... As you were talking about a Mercer triple and then White single. Well, I thought I was just going to congratulate you no, on, no, not on that a part. great, uh, ne- a great performance. Never mind. That, uh, you have great staying power. Yeah, you heard me calling for you. Inning after inning, I kept looking back. I know Bill's coming. For ten innings, I looked. <laughs> and you never came. That's why I'm saying you did a great job. <laughs> Sanchez takes high a ball. I believe that set a new record for you, didn't it? <laughs> it sure did. First time most, in 16 years, most yep, innings. Most consecutive innings. <laughs> and you had to do it to me. <laughs> As you taught me, you taught me well, <laughs> see? The 1-0 pitch to Sanchez. Bounce foul outside of third. And you haven't heard the end of it. I might take off tomorrow. Oh, oh no kidding. <laughs> well, that's all right. I got a golf game. How? Oh, I really taught him well, didn't I? <laughs> Uncle Barry learns too quickly. Well, the other guys used to love to work. <laughs> a ball to strike on Celerino Sanchez. Two outs, White down at first. Scores tied up 1-1. Well, that's for the fourth. Pitch to Sanchez has bounced foul once more outside of third. Jones cuts it off and gets it back to Mike Paul. So it's one and two on Celerino. White takes his time going back to first. Takes a look at the scoreboard as he does. And he sees Dick Allen out there. This is up on the board. Dick Allen leads the Chicago White Sox in here for a Friday night game at 7.30. A couple games, uh, one on Saturday, one on Sunday. Game time at 2. One, two pitch to Sanchez. White moving. The ball fouled off. A chance to see Dick Allen, who right now is leading the American League in batting average at 317. RBIs and home runs. And the White Sox lead the West by a half game over Oakland. Oakland just picked up Matty Alou, Felipe Alou, one of Felipe Alou's younger brothers. White leads. And Paul backs off. Now he's ready to go again. Sanchez still waiting. The one-two pitch. Fastball misses outside. It's two and two. The Yankees used a one-off triple by Bobby Mercer and a single up the middle by Roy White to tie the game up this inning. One-one. Royal of the Rangers has scored their run in the third. Now it's Maddox. 
scoring on a single by Mason. Stretch now, and the 2-2 pitch to Sanchez. White's moving, the ball's fouled off, this time on the right side, straight back and out of play. And the count still two balls and two strikes on Celerino Sanchez. Went all the way down to second, had to make a right turn. U turn, go back to first. The Yankees, one run on four hits. The Rangers, one run on six. The one Yankee error led to the Ranger run. Now the stretch, White leads. Throw the first, White's back there easily. Ball gets aside. Another throw the first, White's back again. Play Sanchez straight away. Salarino has been pulling the ball a little more lately. He's been hitting the ball sharply into left center field. Earlier, he'd been going almost exclusively to the right side. Another throw the first, White's back again. And there's a small gap out in left center for Salarino. Between Bittner, the left fielder, and Maddox, the center fielder. Although that Maddox can cover an awful lot of ground out there. He's an excellent outfielder. Now Sanchez backs off his times call. Two balls and two strikes on Celerino and Sanchez. Two outs. Roy White down at first base. We're in the last of the four. Scores all tied up. One apiece. Breaking balls. Bounce to the hole. Base hit left field. White will hold at second base as Bittner gets the ball in quickly. So Sanchez now pulling the ball a lot more and finding the hole. He's single to left field, sending Roy White down to second. And that'll bring in Ron Swoboda with two outs. Swoboda struck out back in the third, his first time he saw Paul. Rocky with ten runs batted in. And here now with a chance to give the Yankees a lead. White takes a good lead from second. Sanchez easing off first. Stretch and the pitch for Boda is too high a ball. Here's the final. The Cubs beat the Dodgers 2-1. to one. Pappas the winner, Singer the loser. Next pitch is outside. It's two balls and no strikes on Swoboda. Pappas won his 10th ball game of the year. He's lost 7. Singer the loser, 4 and 13. Willie Davis at a home run for the Dodgers. The only Dodger run. 2-0 pitch now to Swoboda. Breaking ball swung on and missed its 2-1. and one. Important games tonight in the American League East. The White Sox are up in Boston. Baltimore's in Minnesota. And the Tigers out in California. Other games, Cleveland at Open, and Kansas City at Milwaukee. Runners lead from first to second. 2-1 pitch to Swoboda. Gets the outside corner. to call strike two. Two and two. Yankees won. Rangers won. Last of the fourth. Two outs. White at second. Sanchez at first. Count two and two on Ron Swoboda. Ball is ready. The left-hander deals. Breaking balls high. It's three and two. Full count. Now the runners will be moving. On deck is Gene Michael. Oh, the Ranger infielders now will have to go to first base with the play if it's on the ground. Now Mason moves a step or two toward White at second. Here's a stretch. The runners are going. The pitch. Hit in the air, right field. Base hit on the line. Right around third. He'll score. And Sanchez takes the third base. And he's in there standing. Yankees lead two to one. With the runners moving, White scored easily from second base. Sanchez hesitated a bit at second, but then decided to go on. Celerino having a bit of trouble once again with that uh, bad leg of his, the full leg muscle. But he made it into third standing. Kubota held at first base, so the Yankees now with runners at first and third 
They have the lead, 2-1, to one, and the batter's Gene Michael, the shortstop. Michael singles sharply to right field his first time up. And the hits are all even now at six apiece. Michael is switch hitter, bats right-handed against Paul. The left-hander comes set and deals. A breaking ball, it's too low. Gene Michael batting a 227 with the home run 29 runs batted in. Picked up his 65th hit of the year back in the third. Ball comes to the belt. The 1-0 pitch. Breaking ball is too high. It's two balls and no strikes. Steve Klein is on deck. The Yankees have taken the lead here in the fourth. A one-out triple by Mercer. He was singled in by White. A single by Celerino Sanchez and an RBI single by Ron Swoboda. Swoboda's 11th run batted into the year. This ball is hit in the air to deep left center after it's Bittner, also Maddox. Maddox with the glasses down, one-handed. In deep left center field, Elliot Maddox, who covers ground out there like a lawnmower. Really got into deep left center field and scooped that drive out of the air off the bat of Gene Michael for the third out. The Yankees do pick up a couple of runs on four hits, and they left two runners. After four innings of play, Yankees two, the Rangers one. At Saratoga, the best of thoroughbreds, the best of harness horses. At Saratoga, the best of performing arts, the best of spas and parks. At Saratoga, the best of auto dealers in August and year-round. At Saratoga, Trice, Duron, Ford, and Mercury. No stoplights up the north way to exit 15. Drive right into the area's leading Ford Mercury dealer, Trice, Duron of Saratoga. Meet Ed Trice and Bill Duron. Always there personally year-round to see that you get the best buy on a new car. Always there personally to see that you get a effective attention in a modern thorough service shop. And now in August, Trice Duron offers country fresh traders delight. Clearance prices on a huge selection of 1972 Fords and Mercury. Right right in for an old fashioned low pressure deal on a brand new Ford or Mercury at clearance prices. Lowest of the year. Take the time saving money saving easy way to a new car. Exit 15 of the North Way Trice Duron. No lack of parking. Trice Duron has eight acres. Yeah and remember those anthills? How could I forget? Still there. Busiest anthills in the Northeast. Well, Mike Paul will lead off against Steve Klein as we go into the top of the fifth. The Yankees ahead now by a score of two to one, and the Yankees continue to uh, come back. In fact, I would think if the Yankees were fortunate enough to win the uh, pennant this year, uh, Phil Rizzuto, they uh, would have to be in the running for the comeback team of the year. I would say so. Paul swings on a breaking ball. He doesn't get it. No seems like when, excuse me, it seems like when the Yankees jump out in front, those are the games they lose. Yeah. They have really come back. Let's see here. Ball bats left-handed. Finds over the head, and the 0-1 pitch. Fast ball, loop foul, up in the deck, upper deck on the left side, out of play. Steve ahead, no balls and two strikes. They play ball, they hit to the opposite field, so he bats left-handed. He singled to right field his first time up. The 0-2 pitch. Fastball swung on and missed. Got him. Pitch was dropped by Munson, but he tags Paul before he can leave the batting box. And there's one away. Second strike out for Steve Klein. That'll bring in Elliot Maddox, the center fielder. Remember, we're talking about uh, pitcher Scooter who uh, might have won 20 ball games and uh, maybe not strike out to 100 men. Yeah. As Maddox fouls the first pitch off. A buddy of yours said that uh, wrote in and listed about 50 or 60 guys who had done it. And no, uh, he said that Lopat, whom you played with, yeah. was one of them. I thought Eddie had more than that. How about that? The 0-1 pitch. Side on a fastball. Moves Maddox back and it's 1-1. One one. I'm going to... Well, Eddie's here at the game tonight, scouting. And I'm going to ask him about that. Not that I doubt the uh, fellow who wrote in. But you do. I do, yes. <laughs> Break the balls outside the Maddox. It's two balls and a strike. One out and nobody on. Yankees ahead two to one, top of the fifth. Bynes ready. The two one pitch to Maddox. Swung on, hit on the ground, a deep short. Backhanded by Michael. Set throws. Just nipped him at first base for out number two. That'll bring in Jim Mason, the shortstop. 
Michael went deep in the hole behind Sanchez. Got set on that back foot, planted the right foot, and fired over to Lou in time to get a speedy Elliott Maddox. Mason's two for two against Quan. In fact, he's driven in the only run the uh, Rangers have scored. Doesn't have that kind of a batting average. He's batting, came into the game batting 217. Fastball moves him back. And that RBI was only the third of the year for uh, Jim Mason. Of course, he's only in his 22nd ball game. He's only been at bat 70 times. 1-0 pitch. Fastball swung on and missed it 1-1. One one. On deck, Larry Bittner. Yankees working with a 2-1 lead. Top of the fifth. Two outs and nobody on. They're playing Mason to pull. 1-1 one, one pitch. Breaking ball. Loop. Foul on the left side. Sanchez is after it. I don't think he'll have room. He does. About six rows back of the seats. And the count's one and two on Mason. We're in the first of two here at the stadium. This one is Klein against Paul. And the next one, it'll be Kekic against Bosman. Jake is trying to move up a little bit closer to the, to the Detroit Tigers. One two pitch from Klein. Fastball gets the inside corner, it's taken. Call strike three, and Steve Klein, putting a little extra on a fastball, caught Jim Mason looking. That's Klein's third strikeout, and that's the third out of the inning for the Rangers. Three up and three down. In the middle of the fifth, the Yankees lead the Texas Rangers, two to one. Well, you know, good humor is the ice cream sold right here at Yankee Stadium. Several leading doctors report heartburn, common indigestion, pressure are most often caused by gas bubbles trapped in the stomach. Antacids alone cannot break up these trouble bubbles, but Digel can. Digel combines antacids plus cymethicone, unique ingredient that breaks up, dissolves bubbles away. Heartburn, pressure, stuffiness go fast. Because Digel relieves both excess acid and gas. For more complete relief, take Digel liquid or tablets. Millions of people suffer from occasional irregularity, and they found that one of the most effective gentle laxatives they can take is Phenomint. Of all the leading laxatives, only Phenomint is a chewing gum, and for a very good reason. As you chew Phenomint, it goes into your system slowly, little by little, and as Phenomint goes into your system slowly, it goes to work gently, predictably. Phenomint, the gentle, predictable laxative, also available in soft, chewable mints. Phenomint. Klein sacrificed Michael to second base his first time up, so Steve has not been at bat officially yet. Steve batting 0-7-9 with one run batted in. Springs on a first pitch and drives it deep to center. Maddox is back there, though. He's loafing around now and one-hands it easily for the first out. I think Elliott Maddox plays center field about as effortlessly as uh, any of the center fielders in the American League I've seen. No doubt about it. A little more experience, and Elliott's going to be one of the top players. Here's Horace Clark, the second baseman. Clark is switch hitter. Bats right-handed against Paul. Yankees up 2-1. to one. Last of the fifth. Hoss is 0 for 2. He's bounced to third and sky to center. They play him straight away, and the outfield plays him in close. Paul didn't like the first time, but he likes the second. And the breaking ball is too high. Jones in close at third. Ball working quickly. The 1-0 pitch. Fast balls are called strike. It's 1-1. One one. I think in the two years I've been here, I've seen Clark bunt once down the third base side. Doesn't bunt off it. Fastball fouled straight back. It's one and two. On deck, Thurman Munson. Yankees ahead two to one. They're using a triple by Mercer, an RBI single by White, and another RBI single by Ron Spoboda to take that lead. As Paul slips a fastball past Clark on the inside corner, it's a called strike three. Well, there are two outs. Both Paul and Klein able to go, get a little extra on fastballs. And for Paul, that's strike out number four. Here's Thurman Munson. 
Munson taking a lot of time getting ready. Rubs out that back line again. This time an inch or two closer to the umpire and the catcher. Don't be careful. Munson will end up up here swinging. <laughs> Ball's ready and the pitch. Slow curve is too high. Well, a lot of batters like to do that. They'll go back and rep that back line out and get as far behind that plate as they can. And a lot of the umpires will take those bats and put it on the front part of the plate and remark that back line and make them stay between the lines. Ball shakes off a couple of signs. Now he's ready. The one old pitch to Munson. This breaking ball is too low. It's two balls and no strikes. Yankees leading two to one. Last of the fifth. Munson's a batter. Here's a 2 0 pitch to Munson. Slow curve is outside. It's three balls and no strikes. Ball takes a long look at the scoreboard. Now he's ready. The 3 0 pitch to Munson. That ball is too low. Lost him. So Paul loses Munson on four straight pitches. And that's the first walk this left-hander's given up. He has four strikeouts, and the batter now, batter now is Bobby Mercer, the center fielder. Paul handled Mercer easily in the first inning, struck him out with a wide-breaking curveball. But then Bobby tripled off the scoreboard in right center field in the fourth, scored the Yankees' first run as Roy White singled through a drawn in infield. And then White later scored on a single by Swoboda. And the Yankees are up 2-1. to one. With third months and down at first base and two outs. Bobby in that familiar crouch, cocking that battle with his left shoulder. Swerve is swung on and missed. It's a hard curve ball from Paul. More like a slider. But still balls in the strike to Mercer. That triple that Mercer got uh, in the fourth inning was his seventh of the year. He has 22 home runs. He's driven home 73 runs. He scored 79. Batting at 289. The 0 1 pitch. Sidearm fastball. Gets the outside corner. No balls and two strikes. Perfect pitch by Mike Paul. Mercer didn't like the call. Backside says a couple of words to the home plate umpire, John Rice. Rice missed a few ball games because of illness. Hank Sore was brought in to take his place. Now he's back. Throw the first. Munson's back there. Safely. Howard actually is playing behind Munson. Ball oh, looks over there. Comes set. Thurm leads. The 0-2 pitch, sidearm curveball, bounce to first base, off the glove of Howard, out in the right field, Munson around second, he'll go to third. First is going for second, and the throw is into the first baseman Howard. Now we'll have to wait and see what they give Howard on that. It's going to be a two-base hit for Mercer. Howard was playing a step behind Thurm Munson there at first base. And he was in good position to field the ball. The ball skipped off his glove, bounced out into right field. Staying in fair territory, Ted Poor ran the ball down, got it back in quickly. And Munson held at third. Bobby Mercer on at second now with two outs. And the batter will be Roy White, the left fielder. Time's call now as Dalton Jones, the third baseman, wants to talk to his pitcher. So Mercer now with a triple and a double in three trips. That double was Mercer's 27th. Well, he's got to be moving in on Lou Pinella in the lead there. Pinella left here with 29. Pinella of the Kansas City Royals led the American League with 29 doubles. Mercer now has 27, and he also now has seven triples, which got to be up in there somewhere. The 22 home runs tied for second in the American League. 73 RBI second. In addition to that, he's stolen nine bases. He's had a season already. Here's White. 
two for two. Tobin has 43rd run back in the fourth. Got an infield hit in the second. Ball winds and a pitch. Curve balls, a call strike. White batting a 280. Second and run scored on the Yankees with 63. Second and base hits with 121. Down the dirt, blocked nicely by Billings. Munson starts in, but holds. Oh, Billings runs, runs that ball down, gets it back to Paul, who was covering home plate. And they count on White, one and one. Yankees ahead, two to one, two outs. They're threatening again. Munson at third, Mercer at second. Last of the fifth. White has hit 20 doubles. No triples this year. Seven home runs. Fastball is down low. It's 2-1 and one on White. Second on the club with 44 runs batted in now. Hey, that Ronnie Bloomberg has 43 RBIs. He's been up about half the amount of times as uh, Mercer, White, Munson, guys like that. Mm-hmm. So Ronnie's made his hits count. White leads the Yankees and stolen bases with 21. Big breaking ball is bounced foul outside of third. Oh, it's 2-2. Two and two. Felipe Alou on deck. Ball now goes on the back side of the mound. He'll meditate a little bit. Rubs the ball up. Doesn't use much rosin. He pitches from the left side of the mound or the first base side of the rubber. 2-2 two, two pitch to White. Fastball, bounce to third. Dug out by Dalton Jones. Good hop. Throws the first base and he gets it. Jones took a tough hop. Came up with it cleanly. And fired White out for the third out. For the Yankees in the uh, fifth inning, no runs on one hit, and they left two runners. After five, Yankees two, Rangers one. When you believe in people, the work is A few years ago, Abco Financial Services was unknown. Today, we're one of the world's largest financial service companies. Every three seconds, we loan money to someone. So when you come into Avco, you come into money. Because if you deserve the credit, at Avco, you get it. Spread the word. Avco Financial Services. When you believe in people, get around. Say, do you know there's a restaurant in Manhattan where you can still take your girl to dine and dance under the stars? Tavern on the Green in Central Park, where you can dance nightly Wednesday through Sunday to the music of Eddie McGinnis and his orchestra. And on Mondays and Tuesdays to discotheque music. Now, for a night out on the town, it's the biggest bargain in New York. Just $7.95 gives you complete dinner, dancing, and free valet parking for the whole evening. Tavern on the Green in Central Park, Manhattan's only country restaurant. Another famous restaurant that honors the carte blanche credit card. All right, Steve Klein doing another one of his fine jobs. I tell you, every time out, I can't remember a game, Bill White, in which Steve Klein pitched badly. He's pitched excellent baseball this year. Even the games he's pitched badly. When they've gotten a lot of hits, they haven't scored. Right. He gets, uh, you know, with that sinker, he gets a lot of double plays. And the Yankees uh, this year have made 138 double plays. A lot of them behind pitchers like Klein and Sottlemyer and Peterson, all sinker ball pitchers. All right, here's Larry Bittner, who will lead off of the Royal Rangers as we go into the last, top of the sixth. Bittner bats left-handed. Takes a breaking ball, it's too high. Bittner is 0 for 2. He's bounced into a force out, and he's bounced into a double play. Yankees up 2 to 1, top of the sixth. Fine deal as the ball pounded up the middle, it'll be a base hit. Just past the outstretched glove of Steve Klein, on into center field, and Bittner is now 1 for 3. That'll bring in Dick Billings, a catcher. Billings has struck out, and he's bounced out. Billings, I would think, is having, certainly, he's having the best year of any of the Rangers. He's batting a 276. Has hit five home runs, but he's driven home 54 runs. Stretch and the pitch to him. Inside a ball, Crouching. On deck, Dalton Jones, the third baseman. Yankees ahead, two to one. Top of the sixth, no outs. Bittner at first base. Alou holds him. Yankee infield looking for two. Quick throw the first. Bittner's back safely. 
Michael and Clark. Cheat just a bit towards second. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Popped up near the mound. Alou is after it. He calls. He's under it and has it for the first out. So Billings popped his pops to the first baseman, Felipe Alou, for the first out here in the sixth. Bittner is still at first base, and the batter's Dalton Jones at third base. Jones, a left-handed batter, is 0 for 2 against Klein. He's bounced to Alou at first base, who tossed to Klein to get him, and he's fly to left field. Normally, this guy's a pull hitter, and the Yankees play him to pull, with Alou holding Bittner there at first. Stretch and the pitch. Swung on, looped in the left center field. That's going to be a base hit in front of Roy White. Bittner had to hold up. He didn't know if White could get to the ball or not, so he'll stop at second base. Jones on at first as he loops a single left field. Before we get to Frank Howard, this is the New York Yankee Baseball Network. Let's pause for station identification. Here on WGY Schenectady, serving Schenectady, Troy, and Albany, New York. The temperature mostly sunny and 78 degrees. Big Frank Howard's in. He's one for two. Bounce back to Klein in the second. Single up the middle in the fourth. One away. Rangers have runners at first and second. Klein comes set. The pitch. Swung on and missed the sinker. No balls and a strike. Big Hondo batting at 244. Nine home runs, 31 runs batted in. He was hurt when he held out a long time. Didn't get in shape. The 0-1 pitch. Breaking balls cut on and missed. No balls and two strikes. Good curve ball by Klein. Oh, well, Steve's ahead now. To Frank Howard. Howard is 6'7", 285 pounds. He's probably just getting in shape for this season. Mm-hmm. Here's a stretch now by Klein. Checks the runners. The 0-2 pitch. Breaking ball. This one's outside. Same place the other one was. This time Howard took it. Boy, if he could just wait on that pitch a little longer. He's just jumping as the pitcher releases that ball. Sticks that left foot out fairly quick. Here's the one-two pitch to Howard. Fastball fouled off. Got a good cut at the fastball. But he fouled it straight back. And it's still the ball and two strikes on Frank Howard. Larry Bittner down at second. Dalton Jones on at first with one out. In the top of the sixth, the Yankees are ahead 2-1. This fellow up here now can get three runs quickly for you. Klein comes to the belt. Checks the runner. The 0-2 pitch. Breaking ball. Bounces short. Michael backs up. Goes to second for the fourth. And the throw first. Double play. But they call the runner safe at second. They call the runner safe at second. The second base umpire, Marty Springstead, evidently felt that Michael's throw pulled Clark off. Clark alertly made the throw the first when they got a lumbering Frank Howard, who's out. Now Hauk is out of the dugout. He's going to argue with Springstead. You know, I tell you, Bill, it's a good thing that Horace Clark went into that tantrum out there because the Yankees might have walked off the field thinking it was three out. I can't blame him for being upset. He was all over that bag. And the guy definitely didn't beat him in the second base. He stood his ground right there. Well, as usual, the umpire wins. Hawk is going to leave. So the Rangers now have runners at second and third. And instead of being out of the inning, there are only two outs. That ball was bouncing the hole. Michael had to come back for it. He backed up a couple of steps through the clerk in what looked like a force there. And Jones was right on top of Hoff, but he made the throw the first anyway. And just nipped Frank Howard lumbering down the first baseline. They did get Howard, but Springstead called Dalton Jones safe at second. So the Rangers have life, and the batter's dead forward. Well, instead of being on the uh, bench in the dugout, the Yankees are still on the field. Instead of getting their 100 and 39 double play. They just got one. Frank Howard, who was out 6 4 to 3. Now Klein's winding with four. The pitch to the right handed batter is a called strike on the outside corner. The 
tying runs down at third. The go-ahead run down at second with two outs in the top of the sixth. Vic Harris, the switch hitter, is on deck. Steve with the ball in front. Goes over the head. Here's the 0-1 pitch to four. Press ball driven deep to left field. That ball is way back. It's going. It's going. It's gone. Home run. And the Rangers lead 4-2. to two. Bittner scores. Dalton Jones scores. And Ted Ford has just hit his 11th home run of the season. And he now has 40 runs batted in. And he's just batted the Rangers into a two-run lead. He pulled that ball down the left field line and went way back in there. No doubt about it. White took a look at it and didn't let it go. He didn't even move. Oh, the Rangers now up 4-2 to two in the top of the sixth. Big three-run home run by Ted Ford. That's the eighth home run given up by Steve Klein this year. He's been stingy with homers. Here's Vic Harris. Takes a strike on the outside corner. Harris, a switch hitter, bats left-handed against Klein. He's 0 for 2. Bounce back to the pitcher and bounce into a fielder's choice. Uh, the Yankees have to come back again. The 0-1 pitch. Best ball. Bounced in the hole. A loo. Backhand. Throws to Klein. Covering. Quick play by Steve Klein as he beats Harris to first base. So, Harris is out. A loo to Klein. Covering for the third out. But the Rangers pick up three runs. On the three hits, the big home run by Ted Ford. And they leave nobody. In the middle of the sixth, the Rangers four, the Yankees two. by the case just in case. These hot summer days, you can work up a thirst with no work at all. A thirst for more than just one cold beer. A thirst for Schaefer, a beer with pleasure that stays first beer crisp and frosty bright every beer through. So don't get caught short. Buy Schaefer, buy the case just in case. Felipe Rojas Salou will lead off with the Yankees. We're in the last of the sixth. The Rangers came back with three runs in the sixth. A three-run home run by Ted Ford to take a 4-2 to two lead. The Rangers have four runs on nine hits. The Yankees two runs on seven hits. Alou is 0 for 2 in the ball game. He's bounced a short and flies to right field. First pitch from Paul. is a called strike. They play a lose to pull on the left side of the infield with a shortstop in the hole. Next pitch is outside. It's one and one. Everybody else plays Felipe straight away. About a lot of room up the middle. Through the infield, that is. Here's a one-one pitch from Paul. Breaking ball misses outside. It's two and one. Well, Steve Klein nursed a two to one lead going into the top of last inning. As Alou bounces one to third, backhanded by Jones. Long throw to Frank Howard at first, and Felipe Alou's out. One away. There's Celerino Sanchez, the third baseman. Celerino's one for two. Struck out and single against Paul. Pitch to Salarino is outside. 
Rangers ahead 4-2 to two here in the last of the six. One out and nobody on. Sanchez takes a strike right down the middle. It's one and one. On deck, Ron Swoboda. Ball over the head. The left-hander deals. Fastball hit in the air to center field. Right to Elliott Maddox, who moves over a couple of steps under it and has it for the second out. Well, here's Ron Swoboda. The Rangers took a one nothing lead in the third inning when Paul singled. Maddox bunted. Paul was forced at second, but Michael Stroh was wide of first, and Maddox went on to second base where he scored on a single by Jim Mason. The Rangers led up one nothing. Yankees uh, went ahead in the fourth, a triple by Mercer, single by White, and an RBI single by Swoboda, who just laces this one down the left field line. Inside the line, Swoboda around first. Going to second as the ball's in left center, and Ronnie is going to hold it second with a double. Swoboda caught the first pitch of breaking ball and lined it over Jones' head down the left field line. The ball hit in the curve out there and bounced over Bittner's head, went back out toward left center. And Swoboda hustled into second for a double. So Rocky's now two for three. He's in scoring position. And the batter will be Gene Michael, the shortstop. Michael is one for two, a single to right field, and he's sky to Maddox in center. He's in there with two outs. We'll vote at second. A chance to get the Yankees one run closer as the Rangers lead four to two here in the last of the six. Kubota leads. He's checked by Paul. The pitch. Swung on. Hit on the ground a second. Dug up there by Harris. He goes to Howard and Michael is out number three. Well, for the Yankees in the sixth, they pick up no runs on one hit and they leave a runner. After six full innings of play, Rangers lead the Yankees four to two. Well, we go into the top of the seventh and the Rangers have uh, taken a 4-2 lead over the Yankees. And in here now to take you over the next three is the scooter, Bill Rizzuto. Okay, Bill White. Mike Paul, who singled and scored in the third inning, then struck out in the fifth, will lead off. Paul, a left-hand batter. Sanchez way in at third. Big Frank Messer is slidding beside me. Frank, uh, are you rested now after all those innings on radio? Oh, yes. Yes. Pitch. Line base hit the left center. Roy White will have to hurry to hold it to a single. He can't. And Mercer's up with it. He's going to throw it at second. And Paul is in with a sliding double. Paul got away from Michael anyway. Roy did not get over to cut it off, and Bobby, thinking he would, had slowed up, and Bobby had a backhanded. His off-balance throw was not nearly in time. So Mike Paul now with a single and a double. Base hit number 10 for the Rangers. You know, those 16-inning ball games are long, but they're a lot longer for the team that loses than oh, for yes. the team that wins. It ended up as a very pleasant morning, afternoon, evening, and night by the time we finally got home. All right, right now the Yankees trailing 4-2, to two, though, have their work cut out for them. Elliot Maddox, who likes to bunt and can hit to right field. He's bounced to third, reached on an error, and was robbed of a base hit on a fine play by Michael. For the benefit of the thousands watching you on TV, was the ZD still hot when you got home? Oh, it had better be. It was. Ball one. I had one core. And you know my temper. Ball one to Maddox. Nobody out. Klein looks in for the sign. Elliott a right-hand batter. Steve checks the runner. His pitch and he bunts. It's a beauty. They're going to have to hustle again. him. Klein can't get anybody. It's a base hit. Cody Elliott Maddox can really lay that ball down, and he laid down a beauty. Klein had no play. It goes as a base hit. Runners at first and third now. Nobody out. And a batter, Jim Mason, who has singled twice and struck out. And that's base hit number 11 for the Rangers. Michael in now to talk with Steve Klein. Yankees cannot afford to give up another run. See how Ralph Hobb plays it. 
Mason, not a power hitter. He might have the infield in. And it looks like he is. One other thing, they're beginning to warm up Wade Blossom game in the Yankee bullpen. All right, Frank. But they do have Billings and Jones, both left-hand hitters, to follow uh, Bittner, rather to follow Mason. All right, nobody out. Left-hand hitter up there. The pitch is a curve hitting the air to right field. Swoboda coming on. And he can't get it. Gets by him. And one run scores. Maddox goes to third. In a second. He's out at second on a beautiful throw by Swoboda. If Ron had caught that ball, that might have been a triple play because both Maddox and Paul were running. And Ron has made catches. I got he dove for it. Just blocked it partially. It went in back of him. It'll go for a single. A run batted in for Mason as Paul, rather as Paul scores. Maddox goes to third base, but Mason is thrown out from Swoboda to Michael. And so, Texas now out in front, five to two. Again, the infield is in. With Larry Bittner, the batter. He has bounced to first, hit into a double play, and single to center. Another left-hand batter. Swings, base hit up the middle. And that'll score Elliott Maddox, and it's now a 6-2 to two ball game. And that is base hit number 13 for Steve Klein. By far the most hits given up by Klein in any one ball game this year. 6-2, to two, the Texas Rangers lead. They have had four hits in this inning. And fortunately, they got one man out on Swoboda's throw to Gene Michael. Mason trying to stretch a single into a double. I tell you, that would have been some triple play had Swoboda been able to dive and come up with that ball. The batter now, Dick Billings. Bittner at first, one out. Line sets. High foul coming back. Munson coming back. He's got room. Makes the catch. And bluffs the throw to second. The runner holds there. So there are two away. It will bring up Dalton Jones, who has bounced to first, fly to left, and single to left. He's scored a run. So did that call at second base. Really upset Steve Klein last inning. When it looked like the Yankees had gotten out of the inning with a double play, except that Marty Springstead called the runner safe at second. Clock threw to first, and they got Howard, but that gave four to life, and he hit a three-run homer. Deep into the left field seat. Pitch to Jones, a bouncer, and Alou can't get it. Clock's up with a throw to Klein. They got him. Nice play. From Clark to Klein. But the Rangers come up with two runs, on four base hits, no errors, and a man left. And now at the end of six and a half, it's Texas six and the Yankees two. Well, the second game of the doubleheader this evening, Dick Bosman, a right-hander, will make his fourth start of the season against the New York Yankees. He is two and one against the Yankees. And Mike Kekic will make his first appearance against the Rangers of this season. Kekic uh, had a little trouble with the Rangers last year. And Lifetime has a record of one and two against him. Mike will be gunning for his 11th win of the year. And his opponent, Dick Bosman, will come into the game with a record of six wins and eight losses. All right, Frank Hal Lanier will uh, pinch it for Steve Klein here in the bottom of the seventh. Lanier batting 212 with two doubles and six runs batted in. Yankees trailing 6 2. They'll need another Frank Merriwell finish here as they did against Kansas City. All right, Paul gets the sign. Slow curve line to left center. That's going to be in for a base hit. And it's going to be extra bases. Lanier around first. Maddox drops the ball. Lanier around second and then holds on with a double. So Hal Lanier coming through with a pinch hit. Line drive double up the alley in left center. Base hit number nine for the Yankees. It'll bring up Morris Clark looking for his first hit of the night. Harris has bounced to third, fly to center, and struck out. And Ted Williams is coming out with that walk of his, that is arm flopping, neck flopping, very loose walk of Ted Williams. Wants to have a 
Robert Chet with his left-hand pitcher and his catcher, and he's looking out towards the bullpen, puts his hands in his pocket. This has not been a night for pitchers. 13 hits for the Rangers, 9 for the Yankees. And they want another pitcher, a big left-hander he weighs for. So while uh, Lindblad takes his warm-up, uh, we'll remind you there are more than 200 ticket outlets in Yankee land. The Yankee Stadium Advanced Ticket Office open every day of the season from 9 to 5. You can also order any time by mail. Send your ticket request with a check or money order in the correct amount with your name and address to Ticket Manager, New York Yankees, Yankee Stadium, Bronx, New York, zip code 10451. Box seats are priced at $4, reserved seats at $3, taxes included, the same prices as in recent seasons. Be sure to add 25 cents to your total order to cover mailing and handling costs. Now, you can also buy tickets over the counter at the popular Yankees Ticketron ticket office located on the mezzanine Vanderbilt Avenue entrance of the Grand Central Terminal overlooking the main information counter. The Grand Central ticket office is open Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 6 and until 4 o'clock on Saturdays. It is not open Sunday. Yankee tickets are also available at all Ticketron offices around the metropolitan area. For the location of the office nearest you in New York, call 644-4400. That's 644-4400. All right, Frank and Horace Clark now with a count of one ball, no strikes on him. Lindblad has one four, lost seven, has a pretty good earned run average, though, 2.63. We told you he's left-handed. Lanier is second, nobody out. Pitch to Clark. Bouncer, fair ball! That's going to be extra bases. Lanier will score, and it's a six to three ball game, and Clark is in with a stand-up double. Ball, so his record is complete now. Nine hits, one walk, four strikeouts, and three runs allowed. Clark at second base with his 15th double of the year and his 29th run batter. Clark ripped that ball so hard down the third baseline that Dalton Jones could only wave at it as it went by. It was really stung off the bat. And by the time Bittner recovered the ball in the left field corner, Lanier was across the plate, and Clark was well on his way to second base. All right, Frank Thurman Munson now has fly to left, bounce to third, and walk. Pitch to Munson. A bouncer foul, and boy, they're jumping on Lindblad's first pitch. Thurman out in front just a little bit. Yankees behind 6-3 now, but nobody out, and Clark at second. Munson the batter, Mercer on deck with White to follow. Well, the Yankees have the men coming up that they want. Stretch by Lindblad. Pitch up the middle, a base hit. Clark will score. This is a six to four ball game. I want to tell you, these Yankees never give up. Two doubles and a single. Six to four. And right now, this is the New York Yankee Baseball Network, and we pause for station identification. It's WGY Schenectady serving Schenectady, Troy, and Albany, New York. The current temperature, 79 degrees, mostly sunny. All right, this crowd going wild again, picking up where they left off Sunday. Bobby Mercer, who has struck out, tripled and doubled. Here's the batter. Nobody out. Munson at first. Fourth term in RBI, number 40 on the air. Stretched by Lindblad. Pitch foul in back of the plate, strike one. All three men that face Lindblad have jumped on his first pitch. Lanier doubled. Rather, Clark doubled. Munson singled, and Mercer fouled it off. Nobody out. Munson leads away. Pitch to Bobby. Swing and a miss on a side on curve, strike two. Bobby was fooled on that pitch. On deck, Roy White. Rangers six, Yankees four. In the bottom of the seventh, nobody out. Menblad gets the sign. Comes to the belt. Line drive, base hit, left field. And holding at second base, Thurman Munson. 
Hudson Yankees that run is at first and second. Nobody out. And here comes Sid Hudson, the pitching coach. Four consecutive base hits. Mercer is now three for four. And he is really hitting that ball. He certainly is. Uh, Bobby with a triple, a double, and a single in this ball game after striking out his first time up. Sid Hudson at the mound, and they're really scrambling around out there in the bullpen. Casey Cox, I don't think, has had a whole lot of time to warm up. But nonetheless, the call is going to go out there for somebody. And with Roy White due to come in as the next hitter, Paul Lindblad faces three men, gives up a double and two singles. Bobby Mercer now hitting 291 as he is leading the club in every phase of offense except stolen bases. And it's going to be Casey Cox. The inning was started by Mike Paul, who began the ball game after giving up a double to left center to Hal Lanier. Ted Williams went to the mound, took Paul out of the game, and brought Paul Lindblad in. Horace Clark promptly ripped a double down the third baseline, passed Dalton Jones to the left field corner to drive in a run. Thurman Munson then singled up the middle to bring Clark home with the fourth run for the Yankees, and Bobby Mercer's base hit, which moved Munson up to second base, has brought in the right-hander Casey Cox. All right, Frank, run is at first and second. Nobody out. The Rangers leading 6-4, to four, and the Yankees really coming alive here in the bottom of the seventh. The stretch by Cox. Pitch is low and outside, ball one. On deck, Felipe Alou. No indication there of any part on the part of Roy White. No, definitely not. Up to pull Cox's uh, sinker, which goes down and away from the left-hand batter. He said, inside, ball two, two and nothing. Dick Hauser flashing the signs to Roy White and the base runners. Could be just a decoy. Roy White with seven home runs. 44 runs batted in. The stretch. High ball three, three and nothing. Then Frank Howard starts over to say something, thinks better of it, moves back. Cox knows he's in a jam. You don't have to go out and tell him. Three balls, no strikes on Roy White. Here's the stretch. The pitch. Low ball four and the bases are loaded. The bases are loaded and Ronnie Bloomberg is coming up to bat for Felipe Alou. Listen to this crowd. batting 284 has 19 doubles, one triple, 11 homers, 43 runs batted in. And Ronnie does not strike out too much. He's only struck out 22 times in 243 at bat. The pitch is popped up. It's playable by Dalton Jones in foul territory. And he makes the catch. And Bloomberg is really upset. Went after a pitch down below the knees and golfed it high in the air. And now Sanchez is being called back and will probably have Johnny Callison. Yep. No, nope, Bernie Allen. Bernie Allen will bat for Celerino Sanchez. As Ralph out going to his bench. And Cox wants to talk with Billings. Swoboda is due up next. And uh, if Allen doesn't do anything, we might see Callison. And Callison is coming out whether Allen does anything or not. So Johnny will be batting for Swoboda. As Ralph Howe goes to his left-hand hitters. All right, Cox goes to the rosin bag. One out now. Base is loaded. The Yankees trailing 6-4. Bottom of the seventh. A base hit will tie it up. Bernie Allen hitting 252, seven doubles, five homers. All right, 
tonight, all three runners lead away. Pitch to Bernie. Ground ball! Howard goes to second. They got one, no chance for two. Munson scores. It's a six to five ball game. That was a good play by big Frank Howard on a grass cutter down the first baseline. So that's a fourth play from four to six. Royal White is out. Thurman Munson scores. The score is now six to five in favor of the Rangers. Runners at first and third, two outs. And the battle will be Johnny Callison batting for Swoboda. That's the 13th run batted in for Bernie Allen. Two men are out. Cox talking with Billings again as Johnny Callison comes on. On the scoreboard, they have just one out, but the runner was just forced at second base. So two out. Allen at first, Mercer at third. And Johnny Callison hitting 259 with eight doubles, six homers, and 22 runs batted in. Casey Cox will have to pitch from a stretch position now. Runners at first and third. On deck, Gene Michael. Pitch to Callison. Outside ball one. Johnny Callison is the eighth Yankee to come to bat here in the bottom of the seventh. The Yankees have scored three runs, but they need one more to tie up this game. Cox ready again. High fly, straight away center field. Elliot Maddox backing up. He's under it and makes the catch. But the Yankees pick up three runs on four base hits. There were no errors and two men left. And at the end of seven, it's the Rangers six, the Yankees five. The year is 1761. We're in the workshop of inventor Benjamin Banneker. He's about to demonstrate a... Well, just what is this, Mr. Banneker? It's a mechanical timing device. It strikes the hour of the day. Firstly. Hmm, that's ingenious. Actually, just a modern version of an old idea. What do you call it, then? A striking clock. Then this would be the first clock made in the new world. Yes, I trust it is. Mr. Banneker is also working on a formula to predict solar eclipses. And so it is. Benjamin Banneker, mathematician, writer, astronomer, surveyor, in 1761, maker of the first clock in the New World, Benjamin Banneker, a free black man. There are people today with as much potential as Mr. Banneker who can't afford an education. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. Send a check to the United Negro College Fund, 55 East 52nd Street, New York, New York, 10022. Well, the new pitcher for the New York Yankees will be Ron Klinkowski, a right-hander. Steve Klein in uh, seven innings allowed six runs, 13 hits. Walked nobody and struck out three. And also in for the Yankees to play third base is Bernie Allen. Ronnie Bloomberg is playing first base, and Johnny Callison will be in right field. So you can mark those changes now. We'll give them to you again. At third base, Bernie Allen. At first base, Ron Bloomberg. And in right field, John Callison. Ron Klimkowski has done a good job in uh, middle inning pitching for the Yankees this year. Uh, now he'll try to hold the Texas Rangers here in the eighth and ninth and hope the Yankees can score the two runs necessary for a victory. All right, he's got to do a good job here. Big Frank Howard hit to the box, singled, and bounced out to the shortstop. Pitch to Howard. Popped up. And Thurman Munson. In foul territory. Makes the catch between home and third, one out. And Klimkowski gave Howard a breaking pitch, and Big Frank way out in front, fouls it off the end of the bat. One out. That's a big man to get out of there. Here's even a bigger man as far as tonight goes. Ted Ford, who has singled twice and hit that three-run home at deep into the left field seats, about 20 rows back, almost in the mezzanine. Ford, three for three. Hitting 239. Curve bounces short. Michael comes in short, hops it. The throw just in time. Gene started to lay back on that ball. It took a big hop. Then he had to come in and got it on a short hop and just did get the speedy Ford. 
two out, and the batter Vic Harris. He's hit to the box, bounced to short, and bounced out to first base. Two out, nobody on. Top of the eighth. Rangers lead by one. There's been 25 hits in this game already. Fastball is outside, ball one. 13 by the Rangers, 12 by the Yankees. Casey Cox on deck. Fastball, ground ball is short. Michael Inby, oh, almost booted that. And just does throw him out. Gene came up while the ball was going down. He had to look twice to see if he had it. But it's a one, two, three inning. Nothing across. And at the end of seven and a half, it's the Rangers six, the Yankees five. These are the sounds of a couple of handball players burning up the court. Texas Rangers. In the play first base is Larry Bittner. And they make a change in left field. It uh, could be Joel Levito. You'll have to uh, turn around before I can get a look at his number here. Joel Levito will be in left field. I believe that's Joel. And Larry Bittner comes from left field into first base as they take Frank Howard out of the ball game and try to protect that one-run lead, Phil. All right, Frank. Bob Shepard announcing it now. You were right, Frank Messer. It is Levito. The pitch to Michael. Line base hit the left field. I want to tell you that Michael is really stroking that P. The two times they got him out, he flied out to deep left center. Maddox making a circus catch. The other time he hit a hard ground ball a second. So, Michael, two for four. First hit off Casey Cox in the potential tying run is at first. Klemkowski is the batter. Ralph Hawk is not going for a pinch hitter as Ron will be up there to sacrifice. And all the Rangers know it. So far this year, Ron has not had a sacrifice in five attempts. Five, at bat. five times at bat, he has struck out twice. He hasn't attempted to sacrifice five times. All right, Michael at first. Dalton Jones coming in at third. Casey Cox knocking a mosquito or a moth away. Here's the stretch by the big right-hander. Klimkowski squares. Bunch foul back on the screen out of play. You mentioned Gene Michael on a hot streak, Phil. Uh, he's had five hits in his last eight times at bat. All right, I said it. In the times they get him out, he's hitting the ball on the nose. Nobody out. Michael at first. Vinkowski will almost have to bump that ball down the first base line to advance Michael. Dalton Jones way in. Cox come charging in. Here's the stretch. The pitch, he bunts foul at the plate at strike two. Kowski moving a little too much as he bunts at the ball. In the true sense of the word, sacrifice means exactly that. You give yourself up to advance the runner. A lot of fellas, when they're up there bunting the sacrifice, try to beat it out. So in all probability, they'll have Ron trying to bunt again with two strikes on him. And usually, the fellow up there doing the bunting bear down a little more when he's got two strikes on him. Here's the stretch. He squares. Bunts. Off the plate, and they're letting it roll. The ghost foul, it's a strikeout. It started fair on the first bounce, and then went foul, so it goes as a strikeout. First one for Casey Cox. 
Michael has to come back to first base, and the batter is Horace Clark. Horace has bounced to third, fly to center, struck out, and double to left. Horace has driven in a run and scored a run. On deck, Thurman Munson. Yankees trail 6-5 here in the bottom of the eighth. Clark taking his practice cuts outside the batter's box. Now steps in. Gene Michael talking with Elston Howard now. Clark batting 245. Gene Michael has one stolen base on the year. If you're wondering about whether the stick might try to steal. All right, Cox gets the sign. Here's the stretch. And the pitch. Fly ball to right field, but right there is Ted Ford. He's under it. Makes the catch, and there are two away now. And the batter, Thurman Munson, is fly to left, bounced to third, walked, and single to center. Thurman has driven in a run and scored a run. Bettner holding the bag against Gene Michael. And the Yankee fans now trying to get their ball club another run. Stretch by Cox. There goes Michael. The ball is foul. Oh, what a jump Gene had. He would not have had a slide on that. He had a running jump. Munson went after the pistol and fouled it into the seats down the right field line. Cox was not paying too much attention to Gene Michael, and he had some running jump. I tell you, if Munson had hit a single that time, Michael might have been able to score. That's how far down to second base he was. Now Cox will have to pay a little more attention to, to the stick over there at first base. Two out. 6-5, the Rangers lead in the bottom of the eighth. Cox gets the sign. Michael leads away. Pitch, he held up, and it's low one of one Michael timed Cox's delivery beautifully on that first time that he was running. Cox hardly comes to a stop as he comes down. And you can get a running jump on him that way. One and one on Thurman Munson. Two men out. Bobby Mercer on deck. Thurman would love to get on for Bobby, who's red hot. The stretch. There goes Michael. The pitch is outside. Throw to second. Goes into center field. Michael's going to go to third. That'll be a stolen base and error on the catcher. And again, Gene got that running jump, and Cox did not come to a set position. So the six steals a big base. And an error on the catcher. Yankees have Michael at third. That's his second stolen base of the year. What a time he picked the steal. Each team with 13 base hits. Each team has made an error. But the Rangers lead 6-5. to five. It's two balls, one strike. On Thurman Munson. With Gene Michael at third base. Joe Munson, who came through with a clutch base hit. And the second game Sunday in a pinch hitting roll, he singled right up the middle. Is in that spot again. Two balls, one strike, two out. A lined up by Cox. Pitch to Thurman. Ground ball is short. Up with it is Mason. Throw to first. They got him by a step. Thurman hit the ball hard, but right at the shortstop. Another thrill, but no run, no run. A base hit, an error, a man left. And at the end of eight full innings, it's Texas 6, the Yankees 5. Fall staff beer. Because we're all in this together. So anyways, Walker, there I was in the middle of nowhere. About to turn up this mountain, see? When all of a sudden, I hear this voice are talking to me. Gabe, you want to pass me a beer? And this voice is saying, Gabe, better watch out. There's a rock slide coming round this bend. Since there wasn't anybody around but me and that horse. He knew it was a horse talking to you. That's right. Telling you not to go on. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, Gabe, what happened? I kept going. And what happened? Nothing. Clearest little old trail you ever did see. No rock slide, no nothing. So how do you figure it? Just a dumb horse walker. Here's your beer. Good talk and good friends deserve a good beer. Falstaff beer. Because we're all in this together. I don't know why I waste my time listening to you, Gabe.
Falstaff Brewing Corporation, Providence, Rhode Island. Well, through uh, eight innings of play, the Rangers six runs, 13 hits. The Yankees five runs on 13 hits. The only game this afternoon saw the Cubs edge the Dodgers 2-1 to one in Chicago. Mel Pappas got the win in that ball game. His record is 10-7 and seven for the Cubs. Bill Singer, the loser, his record is 4-13 and 13 now for the Dodgers. Cubs won that ball game with only four base hits. And right now, Klinkowski again will try to hold the Rangers in the ninth as the pitcher leads off, Bill. All right, Frank Casey Conch takes a pitch low, and he really steps in the bucket. Man, I said he's going to spike somebody in the uh, Ranger dugout. Big right-hand batter up for the first time in the ball game. Klimkowski winds. Pitch is inside. Ball two, two and nothing. The 2-0 pitch inside. Ball three. Balls, no strikes on Casey Cut. High ball four on four straight pitches. Cox is walked. And that's the first walk given up by Yankee pitchers in this ballgame. Steve Klein did not walk anybody while he was in there. And Kowski retired the side in order in his one inning. But now has walked Cox and the batter, Elliot Maddox. And you remember that bunt he laid down last time for a base hit. The Yankees will have to be alert for that again. Well, we got a runner for Casey Cox. Looks like Dave Nelson down there who can uh, steal a base. For the few times you see uh, manager let his pitcher bat, that's set a pitch runner in for him. How about that? All right, Dave Nelson, who can really fly. He was leading the American League in stolen bases for a while. He has 36 stolen bases. Lemkowski's pitch and Maddox bunts. Foul ball hit him off the foot. That would have gotten Nelson a second base easily. And Nelson trotting now, coming back to first. And we'll remind you, this is the New York Yankee Baseball Network, and we pause for station identification. WGY Schenectady serving Schenectady Troy, Albany in the Great Northeast. Temperature 78, mostly sunny. All right, the pitch is bunted at and fouled off again. Strike two. So Maddox, who is normally an excellent bunter, has fouled two pitches off. Nothing into the count. Nelson now, as we told you, 36 stolen bases can really fly, and you can get a pretty good jump on Kunkowski. When Ron lifts that left leg, he kind of double pumps with it. Nelson leads away. Here's the stretch. Throw over to first. He's back. Boy, that was almost a wild throw. Nobody out. 6-5, the Rangers lead, top of the ninth. Here's the stretch. And the pitch. He fouled it off, strike three, and Maddox is out of there. Trying to uh, bunt with two strikes on him. Klimkowski picks up a big strikeout, and it brings up Jim Mason. Now, Mason is three for four in this game. He has singled three times and struck out once. And the seventh one he singled, he drove in a run. He tried to stretch it into a double, and Swoboda made a fine throw to second base. And nail him. One man out. Munson will have to be alert. Throw to first. Nelson back. Mason steps out of the batter's box. Mason batting 247 now with those three hits. The stretch. That oh no, good bluff bounce. They could be two. Clock goes to Michael One. Back to first. Double play. A big double play for the Yankees. Four, six, three. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. And at the end of eight and a half, it's Texas six and the Yankees five. And now, a little help from your friends overseas. I think the most important thing to be aware of when you're traveling through Europe is the local laws, each country's laws about drugs because these people really mean business. No, if you're busted, I mean you're guilty, eh? So if you're guilty, there's nothing they can do. You're in jail. Well, I have one friend who got six years. 
It's a different kind of a world, and uh, things just aren't the same. There are over 900 United States citizens doing time on drug charges in foreign jail cells. They didn't know or they didn't care that their drug laws are tough, and there's no way around them. When you're busted for drugs over there, you're in for the hassle of your life. It's just not, it's just not for me yeah. to be put away in a, in a foreign country, not know what to do, not know who to contact. Well, I have one friend who got six years. Senior citizens admitted for the 50 cent service charge. Looks like Steve Lawson, a left hander, will be the pitcher in the bottom half of the ninth inning for the Texas Rangers. He'll be the third pitcher used in this ball game, a fourth pitcher used by Ted Williams, who started with uh, Mike Paul, used Paul Lindblad, Casey Cox, and when Cox walked to get on in the top half of the inning, he sent a pinch runner in for him. So really, Cox worked uh, two innings in the ball game. And this Steve Lawson from Oakland, California, was called up from Des Moines after he pitched 20 games down there, won seven and lost nine. So far this year for the Major League Club, Lawson has been uh, in seven ball games, no record. He's pitched only 10 innings, Phil, but he struck out eight men. Lawson, uh, seems to me we saw him uh, briefly down there, or did we? Saw him in one ball game. He pitched uh, three innings, allowed one hit, walked two, and struck out two, and did not figure in the decision. All right, Frank, and Bobby Mercer will lead it off. Bobby, who has struck out, tripled, doubled, and singled. And what a time to go for the cycle. All he needs is the home run. I say all he needs. One of the most difficult feats to accomplish is hitting for the cycle in the ball game, getting a single, double, triple, and a home run. And not necessarily in any kind of order. That would be something. And Bobby is red hot right now. Three for four. And batting 291. And there's a pitch. It's in front of home plate all the way back to the screen. Ball one. Well, the young left-hander trying to put a little extra on the pitch to Mercer. Didn't come near the strike zone. It'll be Mercer, White, and Bloomberg. All right, Lawson ready. On the outside corner, what kind of curve was that? That was a weird-looking curve. It certainly was. Still more and more we're seeing these young relief pitchers. This uh, young man is only 21. All right, the 1-1 pitch. Another one, and Burby trying to slap it to left field just a little late. That would have been an easy double trying to get it over Dalton Jones's head. Got good wood on it, but sliced it foul back into the crowd. Said I was watching that game of the week last night when that Terry Forster came on. He can really throw that ball. He's only 21. Right. All right, a ball and two strikes on Mercer. Nobody out, nobody on. The one-two pitch. High and tight. Bobby has to duck out of the way. It's two and two. What a rough curve, this young left-hander. Bobby's going to have to hang in there. Six to five, the Rangers lead in the bottom of the ninth. All right, Mercer not quite ready. John Rice calling time until he is. Now he is. Pitch to Bobby. Deep to right field. We're back there. We're back. And the ball game is tied up at 6-6. Six, six. Well, again, the Yankees have come back in the ball game that seem to be slipping away from them and have tied this one 6-6. Six six. It isn't won yet. 
But they made that first big move on Bobby Mercer's 23rd home run, and that means that our friends at Astro will be sending those nine baseball gloves to Ford's Clara Barton Boys Baseball League in Ford, New Jersey. Holy cow, this crowd went wild. Bobby Mercer has hit for the cycle, a single, a double, a triple, and a homer. The ball game is tied up. Roy White is up there with one ball on him. Lawson delivers ground ball, keeps it short. Mason up with the ball, the long throw. Hey, it's Bobby Mercer! Big statement first. The umpire was on the ball. The throw beat him, but Bittner bobbled the ball, and White is safe. And let's see what they give him. An error. Charge to the short. Whoop, wait a minute. Who's the error charged to? I think they gave it to the shortstop. Actually, the ball reached him on a fly, Frank. I think they're going to charge and change construction to the first baseman. I think they uh, signaled down uh, from the press box an error on the catcher, the receiver of the ball. So uh, that error will go to uh, Larry Bittner. You're yeah, right, Frank. But the ball never did hit the ground. All right, Roy White at first is Ronnie Bloomberg, who pinch hit in the seventh and popped up. White at first, nobody out. All sides, 6 6. Ronnie squares, but football down the first baseline, strike one. Nobody out. What a night for Bobby Mercer. He's had quite a few days where he's had at least four base hits, I think, Frank. I know in the second game of that doubleheader, he had four base hits. One strike on Bloomberg. Ronnie squares. The pitch is bunted at and missed. Strike two. They've been able to bounce back with their inability to sacrifice runners along. On deck, Bernie Allen. All right, two strikes on Ronnie Bloomberg. Here's the stretch. Low, nice play by Billings, the catcher. One ball, two strikes. That's the fifth time, Phil, that Bobby Mercer has had as many as four base hits in the ball game, and the third time in his last four games. The fifth time, Frank? Wow. Fifth time this year and the third time in his last four games. How do you like that? Boy, that's getting them in clusters, I tell you. Yankees tied up now 6-6. Roy White at first, nobody out. The pitch to Bloomberg. A bounce to second base. Harris gets it, goes to second one. Throw to first, not nearly in time. They get the fourth play. From four to six. Bloomberg safe at first base, but again, a failure to bunt. Has cost him a chance for a run. Now Bernie Allen, who pinch hit in the seventh inning. Bernie drove in a run with a ground ball to first base, and the base is loaded. Did not get a base hit. But it was a big ground ball. All right, Bloomberg at first. One out. On deck, Johnny Callison. Stretch by Lawson. And the curve high, almost hit. Allen in the head, ball one. A 1-0 pitch, a curve in there, strike call 1-1, one one, and he has got a good curve. One ball, one strike, one out. Let's see if Ronnie might try to steal a base here. Tough with a left-hand pitcher out there. Here's the strike. And the pitch. Low, two balls and a strike. 6-6 six, six ball game. Texas was leading 1-0. The Yankees took a 2-1 lead. Texas went ahead 4-2, to two, then 6-2. to two. Yankees came back with three, made it 6-5. Versus Homer here in the bottom of the ninth has made it 6-6. Six, six. Lawson sets, swing and a miss at a low curve, and Bloomberg's going to second. I don't know whether it was a foul. If it isn't, Bloomberg's safe at second. Billings could not find the ball. It is not a foul ball. 
So Ronnie Bloomberg very alertly goes down to second base. Billings is looking all over, but down at his feet where the ball was. Am I wrong, or does Billings have a mustache? Yeah, he's got a pretty good set of uh, chops there, uh, Phil. Uh-huh. They'll charge him a pass ball on that play. Okay, incidentally. pass ball. Big break for the Yankees. Runner at second now, only one out. Two and two on Bernie Allen. The stretch by Lawson. Curve, high ball three, three and two. That will not be a stolen base for Ronnie Bloomberg, as Frank Messer told you. That's a pass ball charge to the catcher. But you got to give Ronnie credit for being alert. Because all Billings did was turn his head to look back. The ball was at his feet, and Ronnie took off. If he'd been stealing on that one, uh, he could have gone all the way around to third because uh, Billings just had no idea where that ball was. All right, the 3 2 pitch. Foul off the end of the bat. And Allen just stay alive. And I tell you, this young left hander with 3 and 2 threw a curve again. What a ball game. You know, we've been saying that every game, Frank, here at the state. That's certainly true. And as. Uh, the games, uh, you know, come down toward the end of the year, and the Yankees stay this close. There's going to be that much excitement in every ball game. All right, you folks are missing all the action. Ready again for a 3-2 pitch. Here it comes. Strike three. He curved him. Allen knew it. Bernie trying to decoy and go to first. I tell you, this young man has shown me something with a curveball on three and two twice. That brings up Johnny Callison. Johnny came on as a pinch hitter in the seventh, fly deep to center. So the Yankees need a hit here. You have to say Lawson has some poise out there. Phil, now you'd think that the game-tying home run would rattle him. Uh, then the error by his first baseman, then a pass ball, but he still is hanging right in there. So you have to uh, give him some credit. All right, Frank. Two out, Callis in the batter. Curve is a little bit low over the plate, but low. Ball one, and he's got a dandy. He puts everything behind it. Comes right over the top. Down on that right foot and follows through. On deck, Gene Michael. And Gene has been red hot. The 1-0 delivery. Curve hit in the air, but the center field, Maddox is back. He's under it and makes the catch. But the Yankees pick up the big run on Bobby Mercer's home run. There was one error, a pass ball, and a man left. And at the end of nine full innings, it's Texas six and the Yankees six. Well, what's the Texas Rangers leave? The Chicago White Sox come in, led on by Dick Allen. You talk about some exciting baseball now. You're going to have teams playing each other who are not playing head-on for the pennant, but who are playing for the pennant in their respective divisions. So, you know, both the teams will pull out all the stops the Yankees and the White Sox, and that will be this weekend here at Yankee Stadium, a night game on uh, Friday, September 1st, an afternoon game Saturday the 2nd at 2 o'clock, and the afternoon of September 3rd at 2 o'clock here at Yankee Stadium. Now you have some underlying things in that series. You have both teams, of course, battling for uh, position in their divisions, but you also have one of the more exciting players and perhaps the most exciting uh, Hitter, certainly in the American League, coming in in the person of Richie Allen. And he is battling not only to lead his club to the pennant, but also for the triple batting ground. He would be the first White Sox player ever to do it. All right, Frank Mess, I tell you, after Sunday's tremendous doubleheader, my larynx was semi-fractured. After that ninth inning, it is fractured. So Frank Mess is going to carry you along for, well, I don't know how long, but he's going to carry you along. Frank? Okay, Scooter. And it will be Larry Bittner to lead off the 10th inning for the Texas Rangers. Bittner is 2 for 4 in this ballgame. Out of 6 to 6. Bobby Mercer hitting for the cycle for the first time. You hear the crowd start chanting defense as they combine uh, some of the phrases and words from other sports right into baseball. I don't think a Yankee fan has been more conscious of defense for a long, long time than they are this year. There's the wind-up by Klimkowski, the pitch for the left-hand hitting Bittner, hit in the air of left field. Roy White is after it. He's under it. Should have it. He does have it. One away. One pitch, one down. Bittner slices one off to White and left. And now Rich Billings, the catcher, is over four in this ballgame. 
batting 273. With the flamboyant, very colorful Sparky Lyle leading the Yankee bullpen and defense, it's understandable that uh, Yankee baseball fans have become defense conscious. There's the wind-up by Klumkowski, the pitch here, low and outside for a ball, 1-0. Score tied 6-6. Six six. Curve ball is taken. Outside the strike zone, says the plate umpire Johnny Rice. Klimkowski and Munson both wonder about it. Two balls and no strikes. The Yankees have 14 base hits. The Texas Rangers have 13 hits. Rangers have committed two errors and the Yankees won. Klimkowski's next offering. Fastball is low. I can't get his breaking pitch in or his fastball. He's fallen behind 3-0 to Rich Billings, the right-hand hitter. Dalton Jones is on deck. Next pitch. A strike on the inside corner, 3-1. This one is hit on the ground, through the hole in the left field, past Bernie Allen at third. Base hit. Roy White wings it back in, and Rich Billings is on with a leadoff single. Base hit number 14 for the Texas Rangers. And there have been some base hits rattling around this ballpark the last few days. The batter now is Dalton Jones. He's one for four in the ball game and has scored a run. Sliced a single off into left field back in the sixth inning. Here comes the pitch to him. And it gets the outside corner. Strike one. Dalton Jones off a one for four evening is batting 173. Throw to first base safe. Try to pick Billings off. Joel Levito is on deck. He'll be coming to bat for the first time in this game. Next pitch here. Hit down the left field line. If that's a fair ball, it's going to be trouble. It is a foul ball. Into the corner, but a foul ball. You know, Frank Jones has always been a dead bull hitter. He's pulled everything earlier in the year when we were uh, down in Arlington. And even here, the Yankees played everybody way over on the right side. But uh, the last couple of series against the Yankees, Jones has been trying to carry the ball to the left field. All right, the count to him is 0-2, Bill. Score tied 6-6 six six here in the top half of the 10th inning. Lemkowski has surrendered his first base hit in the ball game as he sets, kicks, and deals. This one is hit on the ground at Clark. Tosses up, goes to Michael out at second. Back to first double play. A 4 6 3 double play that retires the side as the Yankees turn over their third double play in this ball game. And you'll never get them to believe that they didn't have another one that uh, was not allowed back in the sixth inning. 4 6 3. Clark to Michael to Bloomberg. No runs on a base hit. No errors, nobody left in the middle of the 10th inning. The score, Yankees 6 and the Rangers 6. invites you to the exciting Eastern States Exposition. Ten big days starting September 15th in West Springfield, Massachusetts. There will be exciting entertainment, exhibits, and games, and rides for the whole family. Come and see the Big E. And while you're there, visit the Schaefer Tent for some frosty cold Schaefer beer. And the Baltimore Orioles will be in here at Yankee Stadium for their last trip in at the stadium this year. On September 12th and 13th, the Red Sox will be in for a couple of night games. And then that weekend, the 15th, 16th, and 17th of September, a Friday night, a Saturday afternoon, and a Sunday afternoon, 
Bo Powell, Earl Weaver, Dave McNally, Mike Cuellar, Pat Dobson, and the Baltimore Orioles will make their last appearance here at the stadium. So uh, you better get your tickets. You can never tell how close this thing is going to be. The middle of September when the Red Sox and the Baltimore Orioles make their final appearance here at the stadium. All right, Frank Lester. Gene Michael now comes out. He'll lead off the 10th inning. Ron Klinkowski is on deck. The pitch to Michael. Taken low. Ball up. Gene is two for four in this ball game, And he's had five hits in his last eight at-bats. Raising his batting average to 228. Left-hander deals. Michael swings. Ground ball deep in the hole. It's short. Fielded there by Mason. Long throw across. He's out. Michael thrown out by the shortstop, Jim Mason. One down. And they take Kunkowski back. And John Ellis will bat for Ron Kunkowski. John Ellis tied the first game of uh, Sunday's doubleheader. With a double off the wall in center field, came back and caught the second game and had three hits and three runs batted in. So Ellis is now hitting 284. As a pinch hitter, he's 5 for 16 with three runs batted in. Yankee pinch hitters have come through uh, pretty good. One of every four has had a base hit. Left-handed, a right-hand hitter. Outside. Lawson misses the outside corner. Ball one. Steve Lawson relieved in the top of the, the first batter in the ninth inning. He started the ninth inning, in other words. And Mercer homered for the seats in right to tie the game. Next pitch, low. Ball two, two and all. Yankees, six runs on 14 hits. The Rangers, six runs on 14 hits. And the 2-0 pitch. Outside, ball three. Lawson keeping the ball away from John Ellis. However, he gets that ball over the outside part of the plate. Ellis has the power to put it in the right field seat. 3-0 delivery, here it comes. And it is ball four inside. Ellis is on. Looks like Lawson that time tried to put something extra on it. Ellis is out at first base, and Mel Stottlemyre will run for John Ellis. Stottlemyre will run for Ellis at first base. That is the first walk given up by Lawson, and only the third by Ranger pitching. Mike Paul started. Paul Lindblad, Casey Cox, and now Steve Lawson have all pitched in relief. The Yankees with a potential winning run at first base. Billings, the catcher, down behind the plate and across, giving a sign to Lawson. Bittner at first base, holding the runner Stottlemyre on. And Lawson kicks and deals. Clark takes low, ball one. Clark is one for five. He doubled in the seventh inning, came in to score run number four for the Yankees. His double also drove in a run, getting Hal Lanier home from second base. Next pitch to it. High. Ball two. Clark is batting 244 at the moment. A second ball game in a row that has gone into extra innings. The Yankees played 16 against the Kansas City Royals in the nightcap Sunday before winning it 9-8. Here's the pitch to Clark. He takes a strike. It's two and one. Lawson walks off the back of the mound. Gets to Brazen. Two one pitch. Here it comes. Foul back, and it will be out of play. Just into the seats. Yankees have backed up their pitchers in this ball game with three double plays, and they now have 141 to lead the American League.
Two balls, two strikes to Hoss Clark. Mel Stottlemyre at first. Larry Bittner, the first baseman, holding him on. The look over there by the southpaw, Steve Lawson. And here's the pitch. Clark takes high. Ball three and a full count. So now, Dick Hauser goes through the signs at third base. Clark looking down to see if the runner will be going. Stottlemyre looking across to see if House intention is for him to run. Score tied 6-6, six six, bottom half of the 10th. Thurman Munson is on deck. Stretched by Steve Lawson. Jack Stottlemyre. Stottlemyre goes, pitches high, ball four. Winning run is at second. Now here comes Ted Williams. The Texas manager on his way to the mound. Looks like he may make a couple of changes. He's going to bring Tommy Ragland into the ball game at third base for Dalton Jones, and he'd also make a pitching change. So uh, with Jones having been the last hitter in the top of the tenth inning, he'll have his pitcher batting in Jones' spot. Clark on it first. He didn't feel a double play depth. Martin has stepped out. Now moves back in. He has flied to left, routed out to third, walked, single to center, and routed out to short. Kenya turns it loose. Long on, ground ball to second. Could be two. They go to the shortstop out. No play at first as Clark takes uh, Mason out at second base. Williams now comes out again to the playing field to talk to his pitcher and his catcher. They'll talk about Bobby Mercer, who has single, double, tripled, and homered in this ball game. Mercer, four for five, will be batting with Stottlemyre at third and Munson at first. Two away. Uh, they're going to put Mercer on and load the bases up. You don't see this very often. They're going to force. Winston over the second to load the bases up by Dan. Ted Williams, who wasn't too bad a hitter himself, is showing, I think, Bobby Mercer, uh, he's paying him a supreme compliment here by loading the bases up uh, with second base vacant, first base occupied, so is third occupied. And still, Pena can throw that ball in the dirt to White. You can bet White is not feeling too good about this move. He is, hey, you got to show me a little more respect in this, Mr. Williams. Let's see what happens. All right, Munster with the hot bat, and he's put on. That moves Munster down to second. And the only man the Rangers are worried about right now, though, of course, is Fellmeyer, the runner at third. If he crosses the plate, the ball game is over. Pena hides the ball behind his right leg, taking the side. Now the full windup, and the pitch to Roy White. Swung out, hit slowly on the ground towards second base. Dug up there, the throw to first. Harris throws out White, and the is out. Now the strategy paid off as White weakly grounded to the second baseman Vic Harris. For the Yankees, no runs, no hits, there were no errors, and three men are left on base. At the end of 10 innings, the score is still Yankees 6 and the Rangers 6. Well, Frank Metzger, there's only one relief pitcher I know around here gets the kind of hand that, uh, little left-hander out there, Sparky Lyle just got. It's Sparky Lyle. Lyle got roughed up last time uh, he pitched against the Kansas City Royals. In fact, I believe the first time Lyle had pitched, he had to be taken out himself. And McDaniel came on and did a whale of a job uh, in relief of Lyle, and the Yankees finally won that ball game. Sparky is making his 46th appearance for the Yankees. Right now, Lyle is going against... Uh, Joe Levito, a switch hitter, and here's Frank Messer. All right, Bill, Joe Levito is hitting 2 11. He's up there as a right hand batter, of course, chokes up, swings, and misses strike one. Lyle picked up his seventh win in the first game Sunday and uh, came in the second game, tried to save a win for Fritz Peterson and was not effective. Now his 0 1 delivery. Swung on him, missed strike two. Sparky Lyle, and it, you have to be this way, uh, really, to be a ball player, especially a pitcher, and more especially a relief pitcher. He doesn't take that ball game off the mound with him. 0-2 oh, pitch. Check swing, it's low. 1-2. and two. 
foul. Ramrod Stiff taking the sign. Kicks and deals. And it's one out and there. Got it with a breaking ball. So Levito batting for the first time in the ball game strikes out at the hands of Sparky Lyle. And that's Ted Ford. Ford has had a good night. Three for four, including a three-run homer in the sixth inning. The Yankees did not believe Ford should have come to bat in the sixth inning. They thought they had a double play on a ball that Howard hit to Gene Michael at short. Michael flipped to Clark, but they did not allow the out at second base. They threw on the first base and did get Howard. Had it been a double play, it would have ended the inning. But then Ford came up and hit a three-run homer. The pitch is high to Ford, ball one. It was his 11th home run of the year. Next pitch from Lyle. Swung on and missed. One and one. On that play out at second base, Gene Michael, Horace Clark, and Bobby Mercer all the way in from center field protesting to Marty Springstead, the umpire who called it. Now the 1-1 one, one deal. Get on the ground left side. Allen has it. The throw to first base. He's safe at first. The throw for Bloomberg off the bag. He tried to make the tag. Missed the tag, and Ford goes sliding in at first base. That brings up Vic Harris, who swings around and bats right-handed. Charge Bernie Allen with an error on the last play on the throw, which pulled Bloomberg off the bag. Now the 1-0 pitch to Harris. He takes a strike, and it's 1-1. One one. So with one out, the Rangers have a man on. Tom Ragland, the third baseman, is on deck, batting in the ninth spot. 1-1 one, one pitch coming down. Sparky Lyle turns it loose. The runner goes. Pitches bounced foul outside of first. As Harris tried to hit to right field, he fouled it off. Harris is 0-4 in this ball game, batting but 106. Texas Rangers with a young ball club. No, they're not going anywhere. They're going to finish last in their division. So they're uh, giving some of these young players, such as ours, some experience in the major leagues, looking ahead to next year or two or three years from now. Ford takes his lead. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Harris was fooled on the slider. Did not have a good cut. And he strikes out. Second strikeout for Sparky Lyle. And now the batter is Tom Ragland batting for the first time in the ball game. When Ted Williams brought uh, Pena into pitch, he brought Ragland in to play third base, so Ragland could bat on the number nine spot. And Ragland's hitting 185. So to first base, Ford gets back. Four tied six to six here in the top of the eleventh inning. Ragland in fairly close to the plate. The set by Lyle, the pitch to him. Ball on. Looked like it had the plate. Must have been a little bit high. Lyle has his sign from Munson and delivers. Pitch is hit down to Bloomberg. Fair ball. He steps on the bag and the side is out. Right off the end of the bat. Sharply at ground ball right at Bloomberg who makes the play unassisted. And in the top of the 11th inning for the Rangers, no runs, no hits. One Yankee error and a man is left on. In the middle of the 11th inning now, the score is New York 6 and Texas 6. Ronnie Bloomberg will lead off for the Yankees here in the bottom half of the 11th inning. Ronnie is 0 for 2. Popped up and grounded into a force out. Came in with the bases loaded in the seventh inning. A little too anxious. Uh, way out in front of the pitch and popped it up to the third baseman. First pitch to him from Pena. Misses outside and low. Ball one. Bloomberg hitting 283. The 
Daniel Wines kicks the deal. Outside, ball two. Strength here, Frank. Uh, Bloomberg, a low fastball hitter, and Pena, a low sinker ball pitcher. All right, the 2 0 pitch to him. He started to go and took it on the inside corner for a strike. Two and one. Bernie Allen is on deck. Bloomberg spread out the batter's box. 2-1 pitch to him. Way outside. Ball three. Three balls, one strike. Nobody on, nobody out. Six to six ball game in the bottom half of the 11th inning. Alicia Pina, the right hand there. Kicks and deals. Ball four. Bloomberg is on. So the Yankees have the leadoff man on. And Bernie Allen coming up. Johnny Callison comes out on deck. Bernie Allen is hitting 250. He's over two on this ball game. Wants the second base umpire Springstead to move out of his line of vision. Now the dugout is trying to get the left fielder, Joe Levito, in closer. He finally sees Ted Williams and his coach is waving to him. They look for the butt. Allen gives no indication if he takes low and outside. Ragland, the third baseman, well in on the grass. Well, Bernie Allen would have to butt the ball to the right side if he's going to move that runner up. Even though Bloomberg has good speed, that Ragland's right down there ready to shake hands with him. Throw to first base, drives Bloomberg back. Of course, the pitcher here, Pena, would like to keep the runner as close as possible to take that extra step away from him that could mean the difference in a force and a safe play at second base. Next pitch, Allen takes inside, ball two, and again, no indication of a butt. Two balls and no strikes. Horatio Pena requests time, and he wants another baseball. That's it. Boston has gone out in front of Chicago with two first inning runs. The Red Sox leading two to nothing. They're in the third inning up there at Fenway Park. Midway through the third inning, Boston now hitting, leading two nothing. Pena stretches here. Bloomberg takes his lead. Here's the pitch to Bernie Allen. He takes one outside, ball three, and again, no indication of a bunt. Allen steps back, looks down to the third base coach, Dick Hauser. Pena behind on the count, three and all. Oh. He comes set and delivers. Allen takes a strike, three and one. Again, Allen steps back from the plate looking for a sign. What do you think Ted Williams would take for another left-hander out in that bullpen? He'd really like to have one now, but he's used them all. All right, Pena. Throws over to first. Bloomberg gets back. One pitch. Bloomberg goes. It's ball four. Low and outside as Bloomberg broke with the pitch. Bernie Allen walked, and the Yankees have the potential tying run now at second base. The batter, Johnny Callison, and Dick Hauser will come down to talk to him. Third walk allowed by Pena. One of them was intentional. But right now, runners at first and second. And Callison, the left-hand batter up there. Gene Michael comes out on deck. Callison is 0 for 2. 
fly twice to center field. Now he wants Springstead to uh, move out of his line of vision. Springstead likes to get on the third base side of second. Now he gets over on the first base side, checks with the center fielder. Elliot Maddox to see if he's in his way. Bloomberg leads at second, Allen at first. Raglan ready to charge from third. Here's the pitch, and no indication of a modest loan outside, ball one. Yankees do have an extra man on the bench, uh, Frank Messer. Jerry Kenny has not been used in this ball game, and he is, I believe, the only Yankee extra man uh, who has not been used. A couple of times this year, the skipper Ralph Alk has gone through his bench. Lanier is the only man not used in Sunday's affair. 1 0 pitch. Swung on right out of left field. That's going to be in for the base hit. Here comes Bloomberg around third. Here comes the throw way off the line, and the Yankees win it 7 to 6. Johnny Callison lines a single into left field, and Joe Levito's throw was about close 15 to 20 feet off the mark at home plate as Bloomberg comes in to score, and the Yankees have won the first game of the doubleheader here in extra inning. And for the second time in the last three ball games, it is Johnny Callison who knocked in the winning run for the base set. So the Yankees won it by a score of uh, seven to six.